This is Thursday Night Lights. Our sixth season kicks off with a long-running rivalry. As the Clark Cougars go head-to-head -head in a huge matchup against the Churchill Chargers. Get fired up. The area's best coverage of live high school football starts now on TNL. It's time for Church's Chicken, Thursday Night Lights, presented by Baptist Emergency Hospital. Good evening, everybody. You are looking at Comalander Stadium on the north side of San Antonio, where tonight we kick off a brand new season of Church's Chicken, Thursday Night Lights. It's Clark, it's Churchill, it's the Gucci Bowl, and it's the start of the high school football season. And Chuck, I know you're as fired up as I am. How can you not be, Don? Opening night, this game kicking off the entire high school football season, and you're talking about two of the best programs in the area, year in and year out, playoff teams from a year ago, and you know, these programs, both of them, there have been dozens of kids that have not only gone to the next level, we've had NFL players, both from both of these programs, Churchill and Clark combined, Cody Carlson, Wayne McGarity, just a couple. A kid last year from here, Dimitri Flowers, is going to start at Oklahoma. It's a talent-laden team, and Clark is talent-laden again. We saw Trent Ford last year play, and he's going to be their guy tonight. Without a doubt, Don, he's going to be not only their guy on offense, but he's going to be their guy on defense, too. Not only does Trent Ford play quarterback, but he's also going to play cornerback on defense. He's this kind of an athlete. Could beat you with his arm and his legs. He's a special kid. You remember last year, he won MVP in one of these ball games That's last exactly year. Right. The Clark Cougars, they return eight starters, four on each side of the ball. They were less than 500 last year, but that was still good enough to get in the playoffs where they lost in the first round. And as you can see with their stats, with Trenton Ford, they're going to run it about twice as much as they can throw it. And that kid right there will be the carrying the ball for the other school. Indeed he will. It's Nick Smizek and a very familiar name to the folks in this area. This is going to be Smizek's third year playing on the varsity level. This kid is the unabashed leader of this team. He's a special athlete. Air Force has already offered him a scholarship. You would expect he has a great season. There might be even more schools lining up to try to get him. Coach Glenn Hill returns 12 starters. The Chargers last year went a game over 500. They too lost in the first round of the playoffs. And again, with that 2,000 yards rushing, Nick Smizek responsible for over 1,000 of those last year as just a junior. And you're looking live right here at 2009 that was little nick smizek remember him he had a grand slam in the little league world series well the kid is all grown up and as you said he's about ready to go to the air force academy and tonight you're going to see him carry the ball a lot number four for your churchill charges it's a great night to run the football it's a great night to play football alex garcia is down on the sidelines with our ewald Kubota game time kickoff weather alex Oh, yeah, we've got a great night for football. Had a little thunderstorm through here earlier. It kind of clears the air, but it left a nice little breeze out of the east-northeast. That could affect the kicking, could affect the passing. But temperature-wise, it's great. It's 93 degrees outside right now. And on the field with the wind blowing, it feels a lot cooler than that. Night for football. All right, thanks a lot, Alex. When we come back, we'll have our keys to the game, and we'll hear from both coaches as we kick off Church's Chicken Thursday Night Lights right after this. Welcome back to Comalander Stadium, where tonight we kick off the high school football season with the Gucci Bowl. It's Churchill and it's Clark. And Chuck, both of these coaches have certain things they want to accomplish and able to win tonight's game. Let's start with the two. Well, Don, you know, early on in the season and probably every game for all of season long, the first thing you want to do if you're the Clark Cougars tonight, they want to protect the ball. Then the second thing they want to do is they want to make sure they don't turn the ball over. And then they want to be really good on special teams and win that battle as well. As for the Churchill Chargers, Glenn Hill, kind of, I guess, apprehensive. We've got a lot of new players uh, that are going to play this, this season. Smizek, we talked about, is the, is the returner, but a lot of new faces for them. Undoubtedly, Don, but their defense is pretty stout. They've got seven guys back on defense, and as we look at these keys to victory, they actually have a flip-flop 
but Churchill is the one that wants to do, they want to make sure that they're, they want to make sure, Don, that there are no jitters before the game. It's opening night for everybody. They, too, want to make sure that they're very careful with the football. And then the play calling, they don't want to put their kids in a bad situation at all. All right, we're getting ready for the national anthem, but first we're going to check in with our David Chancellor, who's down on the sidelines. David Chancellor always brings us the color from the parents and uh, sidelines and checks the injuries for us as well. David, what's happening? What? A different side to his team earlier this weekend. In fact, he took the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. In fact, he took five buckets, all in honor of a gentleman by the name of Mr. Porterfield, who is the grandfather of former Charger football player Colton Tice and volleyball player Ashlyn Tice as the Chargers run out. If we can come in. All right, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties with David's microphone. We'll get that worked out. Plus, we'll come back. We'll have our national anthem, and we will kick it off, Churchill and Clark, right after this. All right, welcome back. It is Clark, it is Churchill, it is Comalander Stadium, and we are ready for our national anthem as the Chargers and Cougars get ready to kick this off. And really, uh, we got a special treat. We heard them warming up before the game. Chuck, and that's a combined choirs of both schools. Very nice. I'm looking forward to that, like the rest of this night. Let's turn it over to our public address announcer, Pete Landes. And we ask that you please rise as I direct your attention to the south end zone, where our state and national colors are entering the field. This evening, our honor guard is from the Winston Churchill High School Junior ROTC, under the command of Chief Warrant Officer Richard L. Monte Gonzalez and First Sergeant William Pard, Jr. Escort guard for the Texas flag, Cadet First Sergeant Tyler McClarty. Carrying the Texas flag, Cadet Captain Adam Andre. Watching guard over our national colors is Cadet Major Gregory McConnell. The honor of carrying the national standard is Cadet Major Jacob Trevino. Please remain standing and remove hats as the combined voices of the Clark and Churchill choirs under the direction of Mr. Ken Turner pay tribute to this great nation and our men and women in uniform throughout the world with the singing of our national anthem. Nice. How good was that? These two schools used to have that pizza eating contest, Chuck, and it always end up in a like brawl. Members of the media present with us for today's contest. Fans, if you have family and friends that could not be here this evening, let them know that tonight's game is being broadcast live on television, channel CW35. Play-by-play, -play, Don Harris. 
color commentary, Chuck McAtinick. Stats, Mark Lieberman. Sideline reporter, David Chancellor. Our game is also broadcast on the radio on KYT. All right, we're looking now at the last meeting from last year where Churchill is, beat Clark 35 to 20. They kind of dominated that game a year ago, Chuck. We did not have that one on Thursday Night Lights, although this game does kick off Thursday Night Lights or Thursday Night Football in San Antonio every year. You know, what's interesting, Don, is you look at this series between these two schools, and it's pretty doggone even as you take a look. 16 up for Churchill and 15 for the side of Clark, but Churchill's actually won the last four meetings, so... It's going to be an interesting battle tonight because I know, Don, talking to both of these coaches, both of them think they've got legit teams this year. Both of these teams probably under the radar a little bit in terms of what maybe the city thinks about them, but these are really fine football teams, and we're going to see it tonight. All right, so we're getting ready to kick it off, and the Chargers will tee it up. Doing the kicking for the Chargers is Jaron Gonzaba. And back deep to receive for the Cougars is Tyler Enderlin and also Trenton Ford. That's going to be Enderlin taking it at the 10. Gets a block and crosses the 20. Looked like the ball may have come loose. Churchill thinks they've got it. Officials doing a great job to get in there. And it's going to be first down for the Cougars, who got right back on top of that football. And it looked like it was number 30, Carl Williams, who made the uh, really opening play save for the Clark Cougars. Well, we talked about trying to manage opening night jitters, John Don, for both of these teams. And right there, you see it on the opening kickoff. We got a little bit of that going on tonight, no doubt. So Trenton Ford. Much talked about quarterback, brings a man in motion. Hands keeps, and he's brought down there right at the line of scrimmage by the Chargers. Court Jacks, number 42, in on the tackle. Also Sly Everidge, and that's a number we're going to be calling a lot tonight, Don, number 98. This kid's another guy that's been on varsity for three years. Tremendous athlete, very active on that defensive line. And if you're Clark, you want to know where 98 is all night long. He's that kind of a player. You see Trenton Ford there. Those were last year's statistics. Ran for over 800 yards. Second down and call it nine and a half for the Cougars. Ford wants to throw it this time. Average in pursuit. Looked like the umpire was in the way a little bit, but a gain of about five for Ford. And here's your starting lineups. Up front, you got Gabe Leva, Jacob Hammonds, Christopher Johnson, Tyler Young, and Samuel Schefter is the right tackle. Then you got Julian Deshaux. We're going to call his number a lot tonight. That's how you say it, Deshaux. Nick Rummel played here last year, was one of the MVP candidates on defense for the Cougars. Matt Miller, William Young is their favorite target, and Devin Bloom will also see a few balls thrown his way. Third down and about seven. Ford wants to throw, had a man, there was contact, no call, and that was intended for Young. It's incomplete, so the Cougars are going to have to kick it away. That looked like Churchill might have caught a break right there because, indeed, there was contact. You see Sly Everidge in the middle of that lineup. He's the Division I-type talent that Glen Hill has on that defensive side this year. Court Jock has already made a tackle. In the defensive backfield, keep an eye on number 22, Kyle Pollard. He, too, was on that McAllister Park little team, little league team. He, too, is a three-year starter for the Chargers. Back deep to receive for Churchill is number three, Devin Factor. A little bit of trouble for Clark, getting it kicked away. It's bouncing back towards the Cougars, and it's downed at the 31-yard line, and that's where the Chargers will take over. That was a four-yard punt 
And so Churchill's going to have great field position to start this game. Yeah, a little difficult when you can't even field the snap to get the punt off. And, and we talked on the onset that one of the keys for these teams is going to be special teams tonight. And already, it's already played a big part in this game. And, Don, that's what's so interesting about opening night. You know, you've got jitters. You've got kids. Some of them seeing game situations for the very first time. And you're going to see some of that kind of stuff. And I think whoever handles that adversity early on in this game might then go on and win the ball game. There you see number four, Nick Smizek. He's the guy we talked about in the pregame. The guy that will be taking the snaps for the Chargers is David Montoya. He's a senior quarterback. He'll be wearing number six, and, and he had a couple of carries last year for Churchill, but really he didn't get a whole lot of playing time last year because they had a serviceable quarterback, and they also had Dimitri Flowers, who played not only wide receiver, but had almost as half as many passing attempts as their starting quarterback. And, Flowers was one of those big time recruits. And so Montoya is getting his really first start right here tonight. He'll turn, he'll hand it to Nick. Smizek picks up about three and a half. And here's the offensive lineup for the Chargers. Leaf Jennings up front. Big bell cow for that offensive line. Also Chase Lytle on the left tackle will be the blindside operator for Montoya. In the backfield, you've got Smizek. They'll throw it to Rocket and to Tanner Ford. Jacob Groff is the tight end. And it's second down and seven. Here's Smizek again. Wants to go outside, breaks it inside. And Chuck, you can see right there as he picks up a first down. Great vision, great speed, and picked the right hole. And really, just a good guy that works well in the system, you know, Churchill knows what they want to do. This is what they like to do, control the line of scrimmage. And Clark had some question marks on both defense and offensive line. They really like their skill people. So, you know, it might take a while for these Clark youngsters up front to grow up. Right there, Churchill gets a sizable game. If they're going to stop him, it's going to be with Jake Scow up front, big number 76. Trenton Ford, the quarterback, also playing corner there, number nine. First down and 10 for the Chargers on the 15. Guess who? Nick Smizek just hammers his way for three more. And Chuck, you can tell he's he's a little undersized for the Division I level. That's why Air Force is uh, right now probably the leading school for his talents. But not a, he might be a little undersized, but he combines both toughness and speed and in a great vision and quickness. And I think, you know, too, going back to his Little League days, playing on the big stage, you know, he's not afraid of the lights. And, you know, again, Coach Hill talks about what a great leader and what a great kid this kid is off the field. So he's got those intangible things that other kids younger than him are also looking to. Second and seven. Smizek stumbles on the handoff. May have been a little trouble on the exchange as Montoya may have tripped his own man. Gets bowed back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe have lost a yard. Now bring up third down and we'll call it nine. And J.C. Gutierrez, we've not called his number tonight. He's been very active himself on the defensive line. He's been in a couple plays already. And that young man's a senior making a nice showing for himself here in opening night. Sun's starting to go down. Had a nice breeze. It was very hot, but had even a little few raindrops. Good night for football. Third down and nine. Montoya calls a snap, fakes a smize it, looks back this way. Got some room. That's number eight. Jacob Groff close to a first down. Not sure he got all the way to the four. How about Jacob Groff, though? Just a sophomore getting some <laughs> action on the first drive of his sophomore season playing with the big boys. Nice play by Groff. Nice, well-developed play. They had some space over there. Did a good job of following his blockers. And it's going to be fourth and two. Something tells me here they're going to let Nick Smizek bang it right down your throat. In fact, Smizek run a little wildcat himself. Snap directly to Smizek. He's not only to the first down, he's got a touchdown. Nick Smizek right up the middle, and he's fired up about it. They want to run that Wildcat a little more. Uh, there's nothing overly spectacular <laughs> about that, right? Just give number four the ball, and boy, they open up a big, huge hole there on the left side, Don. I mean, there wasn't any contact until he got to the one yard line, and he's taking some helmets with him. Great vision because he was patient enough after taking the snap to kind of pick his hole and then stick his nose in there. And the Chargers are up 6-0.
trying to make it seven is Caden Novikov. How about yep. our man Kyle Dudney? Get a little face time when we mean it with his helmet on the ground. And the extra point is good. The Chargers lead the Clark Cougars seven zip. Nick Smizek on a six yard touchdown run to put the Chargers ahead in the Gucci Bowl. Chuck, can you see the number on the far side? 14. Tyler Enderlin and William Young. <clears throat> no, it was nice of Clark. Welcome Morgan. back. The white jerseys with these with silver, the silver numbers, numbers for two old guys yeah. trying to get the numbers. You guys got in here and heard a little backstage conversation. <laughs> Churchill ready to kick it off after that six play, 30 yard drive. It took two minutes and five seconds. And Nick kick, finished it off with that six yard touchdown run. Jaron Gonzaga will kick it off for the Chargers. Tyler Enderland back to receive, along with number 22, William Young. As we said in the setup, William Young is the leading receiver for the Clark Cougars, or expected to be this year. Played some running back last year. And as you can tell, we got a little wind on the field, actually. We got a lot of wind down on the field. It's blowing the football off the tee. That was kicked short. Young's going to take it at the 7. Got a little space. Crosses the 30. Down to about the 32. Let's head down to the sidelines. And catch up with our David Chancellor, who I know we can hear now. Yes, you can. And I tell you what, uh, this is not a Thursday Night Lights unless we're talking Church's Chicken. And when it comes to churches, we're talking to my good friend Mike Sides. How are you, buddy? Five years, man. We love it. We've been doing this five years. Nothing beats TNL. I look forward to it every year. This is a 10 on my charts. And speaking of 10, do we have a deal for you? 10 pieces of our delicious hand battered chicken, dark meat, two large sides, four biscuits, only 10 bucks. Rush on down, get it now to the end of the week. Yeah, just hit, DV, uh, hit the pause button on the DVR, just leave it running, but go and get you some chicken. As always, back by popular demand, Matthew Kirsten simply said, take it away, guys. Hi, Mr. David. It's great to be back here on Thursday Night Lights. And this year, it's all about having the love. Right, Kirsten? Uh, Kirsten, we're, we're kind of on the air here. Oh, sorry. I was just signing up for the new Church's Chicken Eat Club. Oh, yeah, that's right. Everyone loves Church's Chicken so much that we've created an exclusive Eat Club with real offers and promotions just for you. Tell them how to sign up, Kirsten. Just go to churcheschickenlovers.com, fill out the form, and you will begin getting special offers delivered straight to your inbox. And don't forget, church is chicken. Have the love. You got that one, guys? Have the love. No, they can sing, Dave. You cannot. Bad, bad, bad. 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 Back to you guys. All right. Nice job. Guys. Steve McGee barking out the play calling. Third down and about five for his squad. Always great to see the kids. Always great to see... Mr. Signs and the church's chicken. As Trenton Ford wants to throw back across the field. Has a man, but I tell you what, the Churchill defense had that one snuffed out all the way. Is that our man Michael Brooksbanks over there, number 19? It sure was. Nice play by him. What an unbelievable play that was. Shucked his block like it was an oyster. Got in there and made the play. Look at this. Another good concept there. Just Churchill's defense had it well scouted. Michael Brooksbanks coming through in his senior year. Nice job, kid. Devin Factor back to receive the punt from Clark. Takes a funny hop. And they're going to let it roll out at about the 44. Churchill will have it there. When we come back, we'll take a break. The Chargers leading the Cougars 7-0. Welcome back to Church's Chicken Thursday Night Lights. It's the Churchill Chargers leading the Clark Cougars 7-0, and Churchill's going to start their second possession of the ball game on their own 44-yard line. Montoya hands, and Clark's defense, Jack Scow and the others there to snuff out DeAndre Reed, who gets back to the line of scrimmage. And, Don, this is a really important area of the game now for Clark. You know, you're coming off a couple of really non-productive offensive 
outings, and you've got to rise up and stop this Churchill offense because you just do not want this to get out of hand early. And that was certainly a nice start on first down. A lot of guys swarming to the football. Second down and nine. Montoya with Smizek in the eye. Fakes to him. They threw a little, what they call a pop pass to the tight end, and just a little hot popped right off his hands. That was intended for Jacob Groff. Always tricky, too, when that happens. It's usually when you see a guy end up with a football that wears the other color jersey, but Churchill dodging the bullet here, and this is exactly what Clark wanted. Get the Chargers in third and long, see if he can't make something happen on defense. Interesting call for the Chargers here, third and long. This is a team that loves to run the football, and now they're in a situation where they probably have to throw it. Montoya's gonna keep it himself on a called quarterback draw. Good yardage, picks up about six, but it's not gonna be enough for a first down, and as the Chargers cross into Clark territory, looks like Glen Hill's team's gonna send out the special teams and kick this one away. Good stand by the Clark defense. Indeed it was. I mean, we did exactly what we talked about they needed to do. And I'm sure it actually crossed Coach Hill's mind to actually go for this on fourth down, but you got an opportunity. Your defense already played well for two series. Maybe you can pin Clark down and get yourself another stop and then win the field position back. Caden Novikov will kick it off. It's Enderlin. Back number 14 for Clark. Tyler Enderlin back to receive. Calls for the fair catch. Had a little muff there, but he recovers it. And it is going to be Clark's first down on their own 15-yard line. Hey, we want to tell you about CPS Energy presenting this year's Cheer Challenge. Vote for your favorite high school cheer squad. The top vote getters will get to perform at either the U.S. Army All-American Bowl or the San Antonio High School All-Star Game in January. So make sure you vote for your favorite cheerleader squad. It'd be a big honor for them to uh, cheer during that nationally televised game on NBC. We had a really good time, I know, during the high school All-Star Game. It was really a treat, too, getting to see that much talent here in San Antonio. And some of those kids actually got college scholarships based on what they did in that football game. Trenton Ford is out. Christopher Rollins is in, number 12 at quarterback for the Cougars. We expected this. Coach McGee said he would play a couple of different quarterbacks, and Rollins keeps, has a block, and has space, has a first down, has the 30 and the 38-yard line. First snap for Christopher Rollins is a good one for the Clark offense. That's exactly what Clark needed, and, you know, sometimes you got to get your sparks from somebody, and we talked about Ford was going to be one of those kids that played on both sides of the ball tonight. So they're going to be running kids in and out of the line. They've got four or five guys that are going to be playing on both sides. So finally, Clark's really first positive offensive play of the ball game. And you can see Rollins has good size for a junior. You know, Clark did that last year, too, with Ford. Yeah. Got his feet wet a little bit. So we'll see if the kid can play. Certainly made up a nice play right there. And McGee wants a timeout. Did not like the... Uh, Offensive formation tried to bring 82 in motion. They'll talk it over and we'll take a break when we come back. Right now it's Churchill 7, Clark Zip. Welcome back to the Gucci Bowl. Churchill and Clark. Chargers up 7 0 on a Nick Smizek six yard touchdown run. But the Cougars have a little momentum as Christopher Rollins has come in at quarterback and had a 25 yard game. First down and 10 for the Cougs. Now they run in motion. Rollins wants to throw, has a man wide open. Big gainer. Is that the show? Hard to read those silver numbers. I believe it's William Deshaux, number 21. It is a 46-yard game. Nice little wheel route out of the out, out of the backfield for Deshaux. Young and Defoe, both Williams. And nice little wheel route right into open space where the Chargers were not. And welcome to Thursday Night Lights, Christopher Rollins. Huh? You come in, you do something with your feet, and then perfect pass out of the backfield. Another huge gain. And and this is exactly what Clark needed. First down for the Cougars. There's a handoff. 
That's to William Young. William Young gets the 10 and down near the five. William Young played running back a year ago. Coach McGee told us that he would be their primary wide receiver this year. But Chuck, they did just the opposite. They threw it to Deshaw, and they're running William Young. So very versatile young man right there. Uh, and I want to tell you what, you talk about some key blocks downfield. I mean, they were there were there was one guy to show, not two guys on the rear end. I mean, somebody came to play tonight. So the Cougars are inside the Six Flags Fiesta Texas red zone. And it's another first down. This time it's first and goal. And McGee talking about the clock. Chuck, there's been a, uh, a change in high school football as far as the timing goes. And they're going to take a timeout. That one's going to go to Clarkson. He's, he's taken uh, two timeouts here back to back, but there's been this, this 40 second clock that was much talked about. In the old days, well, last year, uh, whenever there was a dead ball, the ball was spotted, and after the ball was spotted, the official would wind his arm and they would start the clock. Then it started 25 seconds. Well, sometimes it took 25 seconds to line up before you ran that clock. Well, now, as soon as the ball is down, when the whistle blows, it's a 40 second clock. So the games are going to go a little faster, but there may be a few malfunctions uh, as we're all getting used to these new rules from clock operators, from referees. And I think McGee was a little upset that maybe the. Uh, like the clock is running right now on the game clock. And I'm not sure that should be the case. Well, I think the game clock on your screen, it's all messed up. Because we've got 13 seconds left on the scoreboard. We've got 54 seconds on our screen. And quite honestly, they started that 20 seconds before the Cougars lined up. They shouldn't have started that clock until they snapped the football. It's going to happen. It's week one. I know I've already had a couple of rough spots. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not pointing fingers. Yeah, uh, you and me both, brother. <laughs> they got it figured out. A reverse coming this way. It's William Young. William Young to the corner. William Young out of bounds at the three. You know, this is one of those things, Don, that Coach Old told me about this week that he was kind of concerned about. He knows Clark is a very gadgety team. So he really wanted his guys to kind of be on the lookout for anything, expect everything. You're playing a base defense, and you got to give a lot of props to some of these kids that stayed home on that play, Turner Tricker being one of them. I mean, it's tough. Clark is going to run a bunch of sets at you. They're going to give you a lot of different looks, but the end-all, be-all for Clark is generally they're going to want to run the football. And again, Clark only has 10 seconds to snap it. Now they, take, they change that. They stop that 40-second clock to call a penalty. And they took the half the distance, so that moves it inside the two, and better for Steve McGee, it gives him a fresh 25 after a penalty instead of that running 40 that was all the way down to 10. Yeah, and you get the down over as well. So it's first and goal. Rollins turns, hands to the show, or maybe kept it himself, I can't tell. But it looks like it's a touchdown either way. No signal yet. They're going to mark him down short. Interesting play call there. I was faked out. It was a handoff. He did hand it. And it was a dive himself. play. And as good you can call. see, it was a good call by the refs. That's right. He was down. And ball did not cross the goal line. Churchill's stout on that side of the ball, Don. They've got seven returners. As you said, they've got a few guys that have played three years of varsity football now. And they're going to lean on that side of the ball for the better part of the early stages of the season. Steve Dominguez up front, clogging the place up. Again, it looked like Rollins crossed the goal line. And we have a signal, touchdown Cougars. One extra point away from tying this thing up. And what a nice bounce back drive for the Clark Cougars. You know, things not looking their way early on. You know, they get a muff punt. Churchill goes to score their touchdown. And you get a little spark off the bench, you get a couple of big plays. Next thing you know, you're in the end zone. Now you got a chance to tie up this football game. Yeah, and in the meantime, he's created a little bit of a quarterback controversy because Christopher Rollins comes in and 
boom, leads him right down the field with a couple of nice strikes throwing the football, a 25-yard gain running the football. How do you, you, you know, do you bring, you, how do you put Ford back in right at this point? The extra point is good, and it ties the ball game. Churchill Clark tied at seven with a minute two left to go in the first quarter. We'll take another look at the touchdown. Keep plowing, young man. Put your head down and go. The Clark Cougars, as we said, Don, you know, this is two teams that made the playoffs last year. And this is one of those teams, Clark, you know, talking to a couple of the coaches, they think they're going to be able to surprise some teams this year. You know, last year, things didn't go their way so much in non-district, but during district, they did pretty well. All right, David Chancellor is going to join us now from the sidelines. What's up, Dave? Hey, guys, we are here with the uh, Clark band director, Kevin Russell. Uh, I, I almost said coach. You you are you are the coach to 180 uh, band folks. Uh, Kevin, what are we going to see tonight from uh, from the Cougars? Uh, we're going to have a good time. We're going to do a little bit of our competition show entitled Luminosity. It's got some great music from some traditional writers and uh, James Whitbourne and uh, John Mackey, but it's also some really kind of hip, popular stuff by uh, Coldplay and. Uh, uh, Fallout Boy, that's a good thing. I, I'm, I'm a bit, I, I, I like Fallout Boy. I do got to ask you this. You, you talk about, I, I, I called you a coach, but you have 180 uh, members, and you also, you have been practicing since mid-July. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and we don't have a second string or any timeouts, you know. <laughs> we, so it's on all the time. And so we work real hard on leadership, team, student leadership, uh, getting everybody on the same page, buying in, and, and that's where it's at. That's where the secret's at, you know. Coach Russell, that's what we'll refer to you. Good luck tonight. We'll look for you uh, a little bit later in the show. All right, thanks, Dave. Back to you guys. Thanks, Dave. We're under a minute to go in the first quarter, and Jordan Cardenas just gave the Chargers some really good field position. That last Clark drive went seven plays, 85 yards. Took two minutes and 36 seconds off the clock, and it was capped off by that three-yard touchdown run by Christopher Rollins, the junior quarterback. By the way, we'd like to make sure we welcome back Mark Lieberman, our stats guy extraordinaire, who does a fantastic job keeping all the numbers for us, who also has a great blog that he posts the pictures of the construction of the Al new Alamo Stadium, kept us up to date on that renovation from start to finish. Montoya in the shotgun. First and 10, hands to Smizek. Clark had that one figured out, but Smizek is still able to spin off and pick up about four. Chuck, they know what's coming. Well, I mean, both of these teams, you know, Don, they're going to want to run the football, but, you know, it's one of those things that Churchill, you know what you're going to get. They want to do things that they're comfortable doing, and they want to do it better than anybody else. You know what? It's a system that's worked for Coach Hill. He's not going to be one of those guys that tricks you with a lot of gadget plays or a lot of different sets. They are who they are, and it's been wildly successful for them. And then, you know, on the other side of the ball, got to give Mr. Scow a lot of credit on that one because he did a nice job setting the edge. And it brings up second down and seven. Double fake, thrown, tip drill, and incomplete. As Montoya had a little bit too much on that one. Right now it's time for our... University of Incarnate Word smile cam. Some reluctant smilers <laughs> there on camera. The UIW again, really supporting high school football with, again, a sponsorship of the UIW smile cam. Churchill going with some speed in this package. They got Cardenas in, number 25. And I think that kid can play football, and he can. As a sophomore playing varsity, you should see him play baseball. Third down and seven. Little setup screen for Smizek. Look at the moves inside to get in the near first down, and I think he's got it. He's got it by plenty. Boy, good call there. Inside screen all the way. Montoya executed it excellently. And the offensive line, you got to give them credit for that one. Indeed, and also, you know, just the vision of a Nick Smizek as a senior. You know, maybe he doesn't make that play two years ago, but he did a lot of that on his own as he made a couple of really nice moves and then smelled the sticks, picked it up. 
Good enough for another Don Johnson Realtors first down, and that brings us to the end of the first quarter. Our score, Churchill and Clark, the backyard hitters brawl, tied at seven. And welcome back to Thursday Night Lights. It's time for our JR Plumbing first quarter highlights. Nick Smizek got the Chargers on the board, put them up 7-0 with that six-yard touchdown run. Churchill fans were fired up about that. Looked like the Chargers were going to run it right down their throat, but Clark had a nice long drive. Christopher Rollins led him throwing and passing and finished it off himself with the keeper. So we're all tied up, and a Cougar fan with some reasons to cheer as we start the second quarter all knotted up. Churchill switches ends. They've got a first down after Smizek's eight-yard first down run. Now they're a little jet sweep coming this way. Clark has it all red and snuffed out. Number two, Fernando Amezqua with the tackle on DeAndre Reed. And Don, DeAndre Reed is an interesting story. I talked to Coach Hill before the game, and apparently DeAndre Reed and another young man, Alex Simeon, both showed up on his doorstep the first day of school and said, Coach, we can play football. We both played varsity football at our old schools. Number five, DeAndre Reed is from the Dallas area, and then Alex Simeon is from the Valley. And Coach Hill said he thinks they both can play. They're both obviously very new to the program, but he's – He's real excited that he was able to get two quality players just completely out of the blue. He says it never happened to him in all the years that he's been coaching. Yeah, that's one of those things, you know, when you're a high school football coach, you are either doomed by uh, transfers, a lot of time in a military area, in a military town like this, you've got a stud you think's coming back, and all of a sudden, dad gets transferred, or you get the, the lucky part of it, you get blessed with a kid who just starts school, and DeAndre Reed obviously doesn't probably know the playbook yet, brand new, but uh, but obviously made an impression has, on the coaching yeah. staff and did so in a very quick He's got time. A touch already. And I guess Larry Hill and Glenn Hill were talking it over, and neither one of them have had anything happen to him like that before. Third down and five, and Montoya is wants to throw it. Now he's got some space, and he's got the first down. Nice little read there making the decision not to throw it and to keep it himself. And so the Chargers have another Don Johnson realty first down. Yeah, really good decision there, especially when you can say that you end up with the first down at the end of it. If your guys aren't open downfield or if there's some question mark, don't throw it. Tuck it and run. And obviously Montoya showing off of speed right there. So the Chargers have the first down. They are inside Cougar territory. Ball spotted at the 44. Gonna run shotgun again. You got Reed, the new kid, in an eye with Smizek on the left side. They're gonna run Reed again behind Smizek. Does a nice little job of kind of cherry picking his way to the open space and picks up about four. A really good job by the Clark defense too. Staying in the gaps. Langston Johnson making a play over there on the right side. I can tell you this, when Glenn Hill got DeAndre Reed, I bet you his first phone call was to his old coach up in the Dallas area and says, what do I do with this kid? Where, where, where can I put him and what does he do? And he's already figured it out. Got a timeout on the field, so we'll take it with him. Churchill and Clark, hold on just a second. They're winding the clock, so I think we're gonna keep it here. We're gonna keep it here. Welcome back, the Chargers want to go, so we're going to let them second down and eight. As Churchill and Clark are tied up at seven all. A little confusion there, we thought they were taking a timeout. Saw a timeout call. Montoya in the shotgun. Inside to Smizek, right up the middle, right by the umpire. Bowling, taking multiple Clark tacklers with him. Inside for another Don Johnson Realty first down and inside the 25 yard line, a 17 yard pickup for Nick. Hey, guys like Julian Casas, Don, number 79. I don't know how fast you are, but I'm pretty sure you could have run through that hole. Really, really nice job up front by the Churchill kids. Opening that thing up, I mean, that was like parting of the Red Sea. Nice job at the end of the run too by Smizek finishing it off. Inside handoff to Smizek. 
He's going to pick up another four yards. That'll be down to the 20 yard line. Knocking on the door of our Six Flags Fiesta Texas Red Zone. Roderick Agnew, among others, in on the stop for the Cougs, who once again find themselves backed up in their own end. Tenth play of this drive. Montoya in the shotgun. 8 12 and ticking here in the half. Smizek next to him. There's Reed. Reed's got some quickness. Reed to the corner, breaking tackles and down to the six yard line. Definitely want that kid moving into your neighborhood. <laughs> 15-yard pickup. No diggity, no doubt. Wrap it up. Look at him go. A little stiff arm action and then really nice job in the open field there by Trenton Ford making the play. As we said, he plays quarterback and he's also playing DB now. And I really thought that was going to go. It's interesting to watch the officials with this new timing rule. And the 40-second clock has been wind, waved off on this play because of a substitution. So they're going old-fashioned with the 25. They use it sometimes, I guess, and sometimes not. I'm trying to watch them to figure it out. As Montoya will snap it on first and goal. Smizek behind him now in the eye, and why not? Big Nick. Big Nick, touchdown! Touchdown, Chargers. Nick Smizek with his second score of the game. And that time, another six-yarder. So he's got a pair of six-yard scores as the Chargers take a 13-7 lead. And we're seeing early on from the Churchill Chargers, Don, a little thunder, a little lightning, you know, a little shake and bake. You got Smizek who can pound the ball on you. And you get a little flash and Reed. dash on the outside from Dondre Reed. And it's a lethal combination, at least it is on that drive, and Churchill's retaking the lead. So impressed with Smizek's balance. Both times he could have been down short of the goal line, but he was able to manipulate his body to stay upright until he crossed the goal line. The extra point from Caden Novikov is good. And so the Chargers are up 14 to seven. And you, you hit it on the head. Chuck, I think what we're gonna see in this ball game is both coaches try to figure out what they've got. And I think Glenn Hill is finding out, hey, number five may be able to help us. I'm gonna hand it to him again. And, and it sets up Smizek because it keeps Clark from keying on Nick, which they were doing the entire first quarter. Let's go down to David Chancellor. David? Don, uh, you know how much this will pay me to say as a lead volunteer. However, your Churchill Chargers always top notch when it comes to marching bands. Tony Ruiz, the band director for the mighty Churchill Charging uh, Chargers uh, marching band. Uh, first off, do you guys get butterflies on opening night? Absolutely. I mean, we have about half our kids, our freshmen right now, new uniforms, dealing with all kinds of new stuff going on. Come out here and go, oh, yeah, that's before that, and making sure that we play superstar first before everything else. All right, it's Gucci week. Everything's a competition. Talk to your counterpart from Clark. He said they've been going since about late July. When did you guys crank up? Yeah, that's kind of standard for Texas high school around here. We started at July 30th. Pretty much we've been doing a solid three weeks of um, three through our blocks, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. It's uh, exhausted putting a lot of work, but it's starting to pay off and get some perform now. Did you hear that, Don and Chuck? 9 a.m., 9 p.m. That's a lot longer than you guys work. All right, last question. What are we expecting you guys tonight on the field? Uh, we're going to present our uh, show. It's called Unruled Britannia. Um, it's pretty aggressive. I think the crowd's really going to enjoy it. Thanks a lot, Tony. Uh, good luck tonight. Have a great season as well. Again, I'm going to say this again, guys. 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Not like 8 a.m. or that, that, you guys don't get up till noon. 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. We're not going to acknowledge the insult. <laughs> Clark's going to take it over at the 25 yard line. Churchill capped off that drive with an 11 play drive. It went 69 yards with the six yard run by Nick Smizek, and it took five minutes off the clock. So that's what Churchill likes to do run the clock, pound it. And they may have found themselves a new player in number five, DeAndre Reed, as Chuck said earlier. He was the kid that just showed up the first day of school, and Glenn Hill's no dummy. He found a spot for him. Well, you know, you talked about Dimitri Flowers and trying to replace a talent like that when that kid's actually going to see some action at OU this year. Well, Coach Hill says, obviously, you're never going to have a guy like that probably again, but the good news is that he feels like he's got enough talent all over the field that can kind of offset 
what they lose in Dimitri Flowers. Trenton Ford comes back into the game at quarterback. Flags fly. So even though Christopher Rollins drove the Cougars right down the field, I guess Steve McGee is going to alternate series so he can find out which guy is going to be his guy or if he just wants to give Ford some rest from time to time since he does play both ways. Illegal shift. But uh, Two players in motion the Cougars at the same are going to have to. Five-yard penalty. Back this down. one up. Well, it was a good play by Ford. He couldn't find the ears initially, but then, you know, gathered the ball in and then tried to get something out of it. But as you said, the play's coming back. But, man, he took a shot at the end of that play from Kyle Pollard. And that's one of those things. When Ford's playing on both ends of the field, man, that's the thing you're really probably most worried about, Don, if you're the head coach. If you got a talent like Trent Ford, you certainly don't want to get him hurt. Absolutely. All right. First down and about 20 now as they hand out to one of the Williams. And that's William Deshaux, who gets a little bit of it back. And yeah, making the tackle there was court jocks. But again, Kyle Power doing a really nice job aiding on the tackle. He was trying to shuck his tackle and he did a good job too. Love Kyle Pollard. He's a football player. Well, baseball good baseball player, too. player too. Was on that McAllister team, three year starter. His dad Dan was on the Aggie 12th man squad back in the day when Jackie Sherrill was there. His dad played at Churchill. Dan Pollard was a great defensive back at Churchill. Went to Texas A&M, walked onto that Jackie Sherrill 12th man team and and played for a few years there at Texas Tech, I mean Texas A&M, for the Aggies. You owe me five bucks, Dan, for saying your name on TV. It's 14 to seven as that ball is incomplete. Bring up third and 10 for Trenton Ford. He's got the show next to him. Three spread right. Rush coming and Ford avoids it. Now lets it fly. Got a man. Caught. First down. Cougars. Complete to Michael Brooksbank. Make that Kyle Dudney 34-yard game. How about Trenton Ford, the escapability and then going to his left, not an easy thing to do. I think he was thinking about tucking it down and running and then at the last second saw Dudney flashing, laid it up in the air and a beautiful play on both ends for the Cougs and another big play for Clark, getting him trying to back into this game. Another affiliated mortgage first down as Trent Ford goes back, straight drop, fires deep, post route, overthrows everybody. Good coverage back there by Tyron Foley of the Chargers. Tell you what, Trent Ford looked like he was new, knew what he was doing on that one. He just he just overthrew it. No, he did, but you got to give Foley all the credit in the world. I mean, he was stride for stride with the receiver. Actually had the inside step there, so really there wasn't a whole lot of room to go with that football downfield. want to show somebody a tape on how to cover a wide receiver downfield. I don't think you could have done it much better than that one. All right, second down and 10. Ford on a keeper. Breaks one tackle, but he can't get out of the grasp of Court Jocks again. And uh, I smell defensive player nominee already. I think that's the fourth tackle for Jocks. And we were told by Glenn Hill before this game, keep an eye on that young man. Yeah, he's certainly having himself a big night. And you know, they've got, they've got a lot of talent on that side of the football and a lot of experience, too. And, you know, when you've got 98 on one side, and jocks in there, there's there's some decent players on that side of the football. I think Glenn Hill thinks in his own mind he's got himself a top 10 team right here that we're looking at. Fake jet sweep, Ford running for his life. Now fires, has a man. Great pursuit, but it's still caught. First down. William Young took it away. A 24-yard gain. We talked about the great coverage by Tyron okay. Foley on the play before. He had great coverage there again. I thought he was going to bat it down, but somehow it just went right by his right hand. And Young went up and got it. Some strong hands there on the other end. And Trent Ford really looking comfortable in the pocket the last couple of throws. At that time, he just dropped back, laid it out there, and 
heck of a completion on both ends. So the Cougs inside the Fiesta Texas red zone. Ford keeping himself, has the five. He's gonna score. Touchdown Trenton Ford. We're an extra point away from this thing being tied up. Well, you wanted to have a close game on Gucci Ball opening night, didn't you? Clark answers the bell. Very impressed with the play calling of Steve McGee, keeping the Charger defense off balance. And the Cougars are gonna try to tie this thing up. What he follow is blocking perfectly on that play, huh? The kick is up. And it is good. It's 14 all. Churchill and Clark in the Gucci Bowl. Well, it wouldn't be a Gucci Bowl if there wasn't a little anything you can do, I can do better. Back and forth we go. Two Nick Smizek six-yard touchdown runs for the Chargers. And two quarterback keeps for the Cougars. A 75-yard drive by Trenton Ford that time. He led the Cougars down the field. Took two minutes and 18 seconds off the clock. And Ford finished it himself with a 14-yard keeper. Yeah, these are the kinds of things that had Churchill concern going in. I mean, they knew they were going to see a bunch of different sets, gadgets, all kinds of different packages, overloads. And they got a little bit of everything from Trenton Ford on that drive. DeAndre Reed taking it at the five. DeAndre Reed to the 40, to the 42. Let's go down to the field and David Chancellor. What's up, Chance? Don, we have a very excited Churchill crowd and a very excited, and she's going to kill me, Churchill mom. She's Switzerland, not really. Mary Ullman Jaffer from SA Sports. Big partnership uh, between Thursday Night Lights and you guys, uh, and it starts with what everybody's doing in the classroom, and I know that's what everybody's most proud of. That's absolutely right. We're very honored to be a part of Thursday Night Lights and the whole Sinclair Broadcast family this season. Uh, yeah, it's San Antonio Sports Scholar of the Ath uh, Scholar Athlete of the Week. We're really excited to be a part of that to acknowledge kids. We're doing tremendous work in the classroom. They deserve the acknowledgement. We're happy to do it. And we're going to do uh, something to spotlight some cheerleaders this year as well. That's right. The San Antonio Sports All-Star Cheer Challenge, powered by CPS Energy, is going to kick off on September 18th. That's going to be an opportunity for cheer squads across the area to compete, to be cheerle cheerleading on the sidelines during the U.S. Army All-American Bowl and the San Antonio Sports High School All-Star Football Game presented by HEB. Both of those are back-to-back -back on January 3rd in the Alamo Dome. And that's where it all leads to, and the fact that we did it last year, and it was such a great event, the fact that it's in the wintertime, kids can get scholarships, and basically we kick off football season tonight at the Gucci. We end well, something that's a partnership we, we're absolutely loving. Well, we, we love being a part of that, and Thursday Night Lights are going to be is a really critical part of that as we go through the whole season. But, yeah, it's going to be really wonderful. We, San Antonio Sports really wants to give opportunities to kids, and by moving it, as we did last year, to January, so it is at the end of the football high school football season, and we had the opportunity to get a lot of kids, a lot of really great looks from college scouts, and we know it paid off in scholarships. We want to do it again this year. All right, your son, uh, we'll see him on the varsity basketball court for Churchill maybe in about a month, month and a half, I'm predicting. It's going to happen. Uh, I know you got to be Switzerland, but do you want to just give a real quick go Chargers? Go Chargers? <laughs> As a league guy, I'm, have, I'm, I'm just bathing in all this Churchillness. Yeah. Go Chargers. There you go. Good man right there. Good man. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, Dave. Nick Smizek carrying the Chargers to another affiliated mortgage first down. He had about a five-yard game on, on first down. Montoya kept it for about four more on second and went in doubt on third and short. Give it to number four. Nick Smizek, 60 yards already on 11 carries and two scores. Churchill uh, crossing midfield as the sun goes down and they fire up the lights here at Comalander Stadium. First and 10. Hand it off to DeAndre. DeAndre Reed. Chucky does not look like a big kid, but he runs with power and seems to shed tackles every time he touches the ball. Yeah, he saw the crease right there and shot up right through that gap very quickly. 
you know, if you're at Churchill, this is exactly what you want to do. There's a strong breeze that they're trying to drive into right now. And so it's a little bit more difficult if you want to put the ball in the air. Not that Churchill would do that a lot anyway. And plus, they're having so much success on the ground. But this is exactly what you want. In the second quarter, when you're driving into a win like this on this side of the field, put the ball on the ground and go. And they're having some success. Andrew Rocket split wide left. Montoya hands to Smizek. Smizek has 10 yards before anybody even begins to slow him down. It'll all the way down to the 32. Derek Bruno, among many, in on the play. You know, we talked about this on the onset, Don, about Clark being young on both the offensive and defensive side of the ball. Clark really likes their skill, guys, as we said. But you know, they've got some big hosses down there. They just need to see a little game action. I think they're going to be just fine. Another affiliated mortgage first down for Montoya. In the shotgun, snaps it. Gives it to guess who, but that time the Cougars had that one snuffed out. Oh, indeed they did. And J.C. Gutierrez, that's like the third time we've called his name. Shot out of the can on that side. Uh, that time from the right side. It's an unbelievable play right there. Not easy to bring Smizek down and not easy to bring him down two seconds after he gets the ball. Hey, don't forget to log on to the CW35.tv and click on Thursday Night Lights to watch tonight's entire game or just the highlights. You can also check out the pep rallies and the Scholar Athlete of the Week right there, CW35.tv. Second down 11. Montoya keeps up the middle. And he's going to pick up about three. That was a hard, tough running yards right there because Roderick Agnew really lowered the boom at the end of that play, and both guys went down. It was football, football, football here in week one. The Chargers calling timeout, and that gives us time to tell you about you, how you can help a local school take home $2,500. $2,500 TNL band grant. It's all based on votes. Your vote counts. Stay tuned to the halftime show for information on how to vote. The $2,500 TNL grant is made possible by Vulcan Materials Company. Also, we want to tell you about the contractor's building supply, that high end zone shot that we have in the end zone that comes to us from a 43 foot scissor lift provided to us by contractor's building supply. Boy, these guys are great. They got a wide variety of available equipment. They deliver. Just give them a call at 496 1227. They'll take good care of you. They're taking good care of us. How cool is that shot from the scissor lift with the video board in the background? I hope there's not like a nuclear fallout from that thing. A little halo effect. Third down, seven, and Montoya's in trouble. Great pursuit by the Clark defense, and the Cougars hold. Now, this is that territory, Chuck, where what are you going to do? You're going to kick it? You're going to go for it? How good's your kicker? Do you believe in him? Out of his range. Only Glenn Hill knows the range. Brings yep. up fourth down. Too short to punt it. Well, I don't know. I mean, there's a bunch of different things. Obviously, kicking a field goal into this win probably wouldn't be the most ideal situation. But I mean, you know, it's one of those things you gotta ask yourself, where are we at in this ball game? Well, we're late in the second quarter, so. Be a 48 yarder. Yeah, I just, I don't see that into the win unless you got, you know, somebody with a steel toe back there. We're gonna take a time well, out and talk think it over. about it. Let's just tell you about our UIW smile cam, the Churchill Chargers, you can see the Spirit Group's getting ready for halftime. Don't forget that, by the way. One of the great traditions of Thursday Night Lights right here on the CW35 is the fact that we don't just pay attention to the football teams. We give equal time to the, uh, the bands and the Spirit Groups and always look forward to hearing those very talented kids from both bands uh, on the Churchill and the Clark side. 19 seconds away from that, by the way. And you see the Charger fans having a great time out here. The rampant lion wooden mascot, I think that's the same one they had when I went there 30 years ago. You went to high school 30 years ago? 
Come on, man, you're older than me. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I forgot. I don't mind this play at all, at all. I mean, you're late in the first half. It's fourth and nine, why not? You know, if you pick up the first down, you might have a chance to take the lead here. And you still got to make Clark go 70 yards if they want to score. Yeah, good play call. And just through the hands, not sure the first down would have been had anyway by Jacob Groff, but you know that's one that he would like to have back. That's a young man getting his first taste of the varsity football scene and gets to do it all on TV too. And that's a name we're going to be hearing a lot of over the course of the next few years. Jason Garrett will tell you as head coach of the Cowboys, the smart move here is to take a knee and go to halftime. He learned that the hard way in Washington. So it's going to be interesting to see if Steve McGee has learned that lesson and that's exactly what the Cougars are going to do. That's going to wrap up the first half. Our score, the Clark Cougars 14, the Churchill Chargers 14, and that'll take us to halftime. And we look forward to our halftime show with both the Churchill Band and the Clark Band. It's 14 all, folks. We got a good Gucci Bowl. No blowouts this year. Look forward to bringing you the second half when we come back. Are we now doing? Welcome back to the Bauman Automotive Halftime Show. Homelander Stadium, it's the Gucci Bowl here on Church's Chicken Thursday Night Lights. It's time for our Bauman Halftime Show. We're all tied up at 14 between Clark and Churchill. And right now, taking the field, the pride of the Tom C. Clark High School, that is the Clark Marching Band. Let's listen in. of their 2014 competition show titled Luminosity, featuring music of James Whitbourne, John Mackey, and Coldplay. Our soloists this evening are Alex Soto on alto sax, Gabby Desatnik on clarinet, and Karen Valenciano on trumpet.
Great job by the Clark Cougar Marching Band. We'll hear from the Chargers when we come back. Welcome back to the Bauman Automotive Halftime Show. Welcome back to the Bauman Halftime Show. The Clark Cougar Marching Band putting on a great show for the fans here at Comalander Stadium. Let's listen back in. Open, oh, open my mic and let me talk about this Vulcan band thing. As you know, every year on Church's Chicken Thursday Night Lights, we like to feature not only the football teams, but the bands from both schools, and Clark was great right there, but also, as always, we take a look at the scholar athletes that are so important to these schools and the great young men doing great things on the field and in the classroom. So it's time for our Scholar Athlete of the Week. The university is on the wish list of our first two San Antonio sports scholar athletes, rank among the very best in the entire country. I'm going to apply early to Stanford, and then I'm also you know, looking at the University of Texas at Austin, as well as Harvard, Duke, and Georgia Tech. Well, um, I'm going to apply to UT Austin, and probably like Rice and Harvard, MIT. Can't blame Clark's Kevin Choi and Churchill's Elise Laird for aiming so high. In fact, given their credentials, it would be disappointing if they didn't. An outside hitter on Churchill's volleyball team, Elise also serves as senior class president. By the time she graduates, she would have completed 12 advanced placement courses. Ask her which means more, getting a game winning point, or acing an AP test, and it's no contest. Even if you get that kill, you can't really take responsibility because the whole team kind of has each other's back. But the AP, getting a five on an AP test is especially rewarding because you've been working for that for like nine months. As for Kevin, he also serves on student government, the class treasurer and the member of the National Honor Society. He also runs cross country, most important to him. I'm really involved in Latin Club. I've done it like, all of my years in like, high school and I've competed at like nationals and stuff. It's, it's a really big part of my high school career and experience and I guess I've devoted a lot of time to that. Elise's GPA of 110.92 ranks six in her class of 690 at Churchill. Kevin's 103.8 GPA ranks first at Clark. I like to take the hardest courses, so those are the AP courses, and I have found those to be the most enjoyable. It's a good feeling. It's kind of nerve-wracking, though. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure, but I, I like it. It shows like hard work and stuff pays off. Kevin Choi and Elise Lair, this week's San Antonio Sports Scholar Athletes. All right, thanks a lot, Hector. And as you see, we are playing at Jerry Comalander Stadium. And we're also very, very fortunate to be joined by the man himself, Jerry Comalander, who told us tonight that his wife, you're up here so much that you may be buried here, is what she said. That's what she tells me, Don. <laughs> I, I'm not sure what that means, but uh, she's been here almost as much as I have. I think she's probably seen more high school football games than 
anybody else in Northeast School District, and uh, she still enjoys it, and uh, I enjoy having her out here with me. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, to, you've been around so many years. I've known you for 40 or so, and things change, but you're still the athletic director of the Northeast School District, and so we've seen some wonderful things happen under your watch, not only this stadium, Heroes Stadium being built, and then you say there's lots of construction going on at, at schools as Northeast continues to grow. We do have, and we've been very fortunate that our district passed a bond that allowed us to uh, renovate some athletic facilities on all our campuses and we're currently doing that at uh, Reagan and Lee, Lee the second oldest school in the district and, and also at MacArthur the oldest school and so in another 14, 15 months uh, those three schools and their athletic facilities will be up to par with all the others so we're really proud of that and, and happy that it's being done for those kiddos in, in our, our athletic programs. Of course, your Churchill Chargers won the state championship in 1976 when you were the head coach. We've seen a lot of great players come through, not only Churchill, but all the schools uh, in the Northeast Independent School District. And the talent level seems to just get better and better. It does. And I was telling our superintendent the other day, he was asking me how we were going to do it. And I said, you know, last year, every school had their quarterback returning. And this year, only one has their quarterback returning. So. Uh, we're anxious to see how this year is going to unfold itself and uh, I think uh, all our teams are going to be uh, pretty good but uh, who's going to rise to the top is going to be really interesting over the next four or five weeks. How thrilling is it for you as a coach to watch players not only come through and be good high school football players and then play at the college level. We were talking about Dimitri Flowers and they start at Oklahoma as a freshman. Then to see them, some of them go play pro, but all of them go on now to be in their 40s and 50s and a lot of them successful businessmen. It's going to be very rewarding to know that you had an impact on those lives. Well, it, it really is. I, I think I've always told our coaches, if you love kids and you love coaching, uh, then you're always going to reap those kind of rewards of not only when you coach them, but watch them uh, later on in life. And uh, we've been fortunate. I've been here long enough to see a lot of those guys go off and their kids are playing. And uh, so that brings up a lot of memories. Dan and Stacy Pollard were at our annual booster club meeting yesterday. Of course, Dan played and Stacy was a head cheerleader. And uh, what a thrill that is uh, for those of us that knew them. And uh, I'm sure for them as well. Kyle now a three-year starter. We've already called his number here a couple of times tonight. Now the, the mighty Churchill Charger band is taking the field. And I know that uh, Coach Comlander is just as proud of the bands and the spirit groups as he is the football teams. And we'll hear from the Churchill band when we come back. Welcome back to the Bauman Automotive Halftime Show. Welcome back to the Bauman Halftime Show. Our score, the Clark Cougars 14, the Churchill Chargers 14. Great performance by the Clark Marching Band. Now let's go down to the field and hear from the Winston Churchill Chargers. by the Churchill Charger Marching Band. All right now we're gonna show you some of the first half highlights. We've got two touchdowns apiece from Churchill and from Clark. The Cougars came out fired up. They're ready to take on their backyard neighbors. Nick Smizek though made it quickly seven zip for Churchill as he pulled in on fourth down. Churchill had reason to celebrate but 
Christopher Rollins drove the Cougars right down the field, punched it in himself, and we were all tied up. 7-7, go to the second quarter, and it was more Nick Smizek. Again, the Chargers went on a 75-yard drive. Smizek's already got 70 yards on 13 carries. And he did it himself right there. Nice balance to get in. 14-7, Churchill and Steve McGee said, we got to do something about that. So he had Trenton Ford keep it himself. He went in from 14 yards out, and we're all tied up at 14 apiece. We take a look at our Church's Chicken halftime stats, and right now Chuck is kind of even. Churchill got the edge in rushing yards. Clarkstone had a lot more than Churchill, and total yards not too far difference. First down's pretty close. No turnovers, few penalties. Not bad at all. No, and it's really been an interesting game, Don, from the standpoint. There was a moment early on in that first quarter where I really felt like Churchill was about to blow this game open. You know, Clark had a couple of bad series, three and outs, and they botched the punt. And Churchill had the ball. Clark's defense makes a really nice defensive effort. They get some big plays on offense. Next thing you know, we got us a ball game. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll kick off the second half. Church's Chicken Thursday Night Lights from Comalander Stadium. Thank you for watching the Bauman Automotive Halftime Show. Stay tuned for the second half kickoff. Welcome back. Get ready for the second half of Church's Chicken Thursday Night Lights. It's our kickoff to season six. Clark Cougars and Churchill Chargers all tied at 14. We got a good one. Getting ready to kick off the uh, second half. And here come the Chargers. Oh. Cheerleaders, and there's Kyle Pollard leading the way. Coach Kamlander spoke about him. His dad, Dan, played here. There's the Supercharger fans. They're fired up. And for good reason, Nick Smizek has carried the Chargers to the lead both times, and then Clark has come back and tied it up. Yeah, it's been like a big boxing match, John. Really, your ping pong. I mean, it's been one team scores, the other one matches, and vice versa. And, you know, really, we talked about Churchill. How about... Same thing for Clark, you know, as we talked about in the last segment. Things not really going Clark's way early on in that game, and then Christopher Rollins comes in. I don't believe Colt playing the quarterback position, but now had a big play with his feet and made another nice play on the wheel route, picking up more yards, and that kind of woke Clark up and got him into this ball game. It's been really an even contest from that moment on. Yes, it has, and it's interesting to see what Steve McGee is going to do with his quarterback situation. I think he's got a good thing going here, Chuck, with this kind of platoon system that he's got because both kids have played well. Trenton Ford really responded after Rollins led the Cougars to a touchdown. Ford came back in, got his chance, and he let him down and scored. So I don't think there's jealousy there or anything like that. I think both kids understand their role. Trenton probably enjoys a little bit of a rest since he's playing on the defensive side of the ball. And from a strategic standpoint, Churchill never knows which one's going to be in, and so they can't really key on one. They're two different looking kids. Rollins is bigger, stronger, more of a bull rusher, and, and Ford has that speed and quickness. So it's a, it's a nice little system for Steve McGee so far tonight. Here's the new kid, DeAndre Reed. We talked about him earlier in the ball game. He's taking it out to the 20, and he's popped right down there at the 21. Nice little tackle with the contact was Gerald Moreland on the hit. And Churchill's going to have a first down at their own 22-yard line. Well, you know, for Clark, too, you've got, you know, you come into this ball game where you're really thinking about what can we do against this very talented and veteran Churchill defense? And I know that was a huge concern for Coach McGee. And as we said, you know, a couple of rough series to start. But they've had a nice couple of series since then. And I think we're going to see ourselves a pretty good ball game here in the second half. All right, so Montani Montoya is in the shotgun. He's got Nick Smizek behind him. He hands to Nick. Nick picks up a good five or six, but he's lost the ball. It's loose. And the Clark coaches in the booth next door say, that's us, white ball, but they're fighting for it. Clark's pointing that way. The officials are going to give it to him. Clark football. Big number 95, and, and I believe that's, uh, that might be Ford who came up with it. I'm trying to see. It may have been 
Gerald Moreland again, 27. I don't know who was able to recover that football, but at the initial point of attack, young Caden Stills going to get in there. And he's part of the reason why that ball ended up on the ground. Nice 17. hit. Well, I tell you what, Chuck, it's hard to get that ball out from Nick Smizer. I beg your pardon. That's number 47. It looked like 17 from here. These cards are really hard to, hard to see on Nick TV. Rummel. And that was Nick Rummel. Yeah. And you know what a stud he is from last year. Yeah, and you know he knows the rules because Mama's a judge. <laughs> Little double reverse, Nick Young fires, just under throws him, and Nick's gonna want that one back. I thought I saw a flag. So, Clark may have jumped the gun a little early with that formation, trying to pull that off, may have a man in motion. This is one of the big concerns for Churchill too, Don coming in. These guys over on the Charger side like to play a base defense. Offense. So we had an illegal motion. Hey, Coach Hill told me, you know, Clark is going to make you prepare for everything. They're going to do all kinds of stuff. And if they're good at all those things, we're not going to be able to stop them. And so, you know, so far tonight, you know, it's been tit for tat. Churchill's made a couple of plays. Clark's made a couple of plays. But there's no doubt that Churchill, or I'm sorry, Clark likes to throw a lot of different things at you. Ford with the keep. It's about five of it back. It's going to set up second down in about 10. Although they, they flip it to fourth down. It's week one for everybody, folks. <laughs> Indeed it is, brother. I feel like we haven't done this in a year. Now the wind's died down a little bit, though, Don. You know, in the first half, it was really, really chucking from right to left. Looked like we had another man jump, and Steve McGee just doesn't like the formation. So he's going to call a timeout. First time out of the half. Timeout for the Clark Cougars, and we'll take it with them. Coming back, all tied up at 14 after this. And we're back, all tied up at 14. Big second and 10 for the Clark Cougars. Trenton Ford in the shotgun. Faked the pass to the outside, taking himself. Dancing around a lot, but not going far. Nice job by the... Churchill defense, big number 74, Steven Dominguez, 265 pounds on the nose and uh, in the nose tackle position. And I'll tell you what, he, uh, he had that clogged up as did number 88, Zach Baldessari. Yeah, really nice job on the Churchill side of the ball, Don. Those guys really doing a nice job of staying at home. The quarterback looked one way and then ran the other. A lot of guys staying in their gaps and doing their thing. Big play here. Third down and eight on the Churchill 26. Trent Ford, low snap, gonna fire, does, has a man, caught. But it's short of the first down by about a yard. Another great job of coverage by Tyron Foley, who has proven tonight, even though he's given up a couple of catches, that he is all over the ball. Just a better play by the Clark receiver for the second time. Both kids playing great. Couldn't have played it better either way. It's a really nice ball, but I kind of thought a lousy spot. You know, I'm not saying it was a first down, but it looked a lot closer than that. Yeah, it was a forward front. Yeah, maybe a yard. Fourth and a yard and a half now, and Clark's going for it. Inside handoff, Young, unless Ford kept it, but either way, they didn't get it. Either way, the Churchill Charger defense is fired up about that one. We'll be able to see exactly who made the tackle on the replay, but it looked like Dominguez, 74, was in there again. And the Chargers take over on downs, and Glenn Hill's got to be fired up about that. Great job by the Churchill defense. And it looked like the Clark sideline was not too thrilled. I think that was a busted play, Don. Not sure who the ball was supposed to go to, but you know, that's just way too much movement in the backfield. I'm sure that's not the play that they had designed there. And so a fourth down play goes awry for Clark. Churchill catches a break now. Backed up inside their own 20. 
Yeah, and I tell you what, it was Dominguez who made the hit, and it looked like Ford may have wanted to hand that to Young, but Young was already through the hole, so he kept it himself. May have been a bust. So it's a Don Johnson Realtors first down for the Chargers. Taking over on their own 19. Fake to smize it. Montoya running for his life, keeps it. Does a good job of getting something out of nothing and gets about a two-yard game. You're not kidding. I mean, that should have been a five or six-yard loss. I don't even know how he got it. Good defense by the Cougar. Great pursuit by Matthew Miller. Roderick Agnew also there. And that's going to set up a... Second down and 10 for the Chargers. That 40 second clock has not been a problem right now for either team. That one got started a little late. Still got 27 to snap it. Second down and eight. In motion is Reed. Fake it to him. Montoya keeps his drill. Big hit by number two. That's Fernando Amezcua. Amezcua, we were told before the game that he was going to be one of the big hitters, and I'll tell you what, he brought him on that play. Yeah, 6'1", 215. I don't think there's any question that the quarterback felt every bit of this one. No, thank you. We talked about this young Cougar defensive line trying to grow up in front of our very eyes, and, you know, really since about the third series of this game, played pretty darn well. Third and five, big play for him here. Smizek's got it. Will he have enough for the first down? He fights for the 30, and I believe he got it if they give him a good spot. Both side judges do. First down, Chargers, and Mick Smizek, Smizek got that one on his own, Chuck. That was just dancing and finding just enough space and a last-second dive for the line. Yeah, we talk about this young defense on the Clark side of the football right here. When a guy lets you go through that easy, you got to know that the screen is coming. Churchill worked that play earlier in the game to perfection, and Clark almost was able to make up for it and make the stop, but they did not. Hence, Churchill's moving the football and get a new fresh set of downs. Don Johnson Realtors first down for Nick Smizek, who takes it up the middle. Nick Smizek again picking up eight. It's interesting, Chuck, how he sees the hole and runs equally laterally and straight up the field at the same time. He's he's a tiptoe runner, but he's also got incredible strength. And he doesn't take a straight line, and the little dancing just gets him right to the crease that he wants. It's, you can't teach that. That's just innate. You know, he's got a bunch of good guys up front, too. And, you know, you get to the point in the ball game too, where you run the ball as much as these guys, and as effective as they are, I mean, they wear you out sometimes, too. But Clark's hanging in there. Not easy running backs to stop, no doubt. Scow on the tackle there. Smizek has gone over 100 yards on the night. Picks up about a yard there, which sets up another third and two. Everything that we know so far will tell you what. Maybe another Wildcat or maybe another belly play to Nick Smizek. Line him up in the eye. Clark knows what's coming. Now they shift. Third and two. Fake handoff. And a nice first down. Got to keep him off balance. And good call by Glenn Hill right there as David Montoya picks up the first down. And Churchill really going with the slow kill in this series. You know, they're running between the tackles. They're mixing it up between running back and quarterback. And really nothing fancy, you know, a little weed stuff. And getting three yards here, four yards here. And all of a sudden, you know, the Clark defense is out there on the field for quite a while. That's another Don Johnson Realtors first down. Churchill on the move. Montoya fires to the far side. That's caught. Good coverage on the play on the far side. Trent but Ford. Clark defense. Trenton Ford. You've seen him play quarterback. Yeah, doing everything but drive the bus. He was over there to bring down Brad Goforth. Yeah, well, we know the kid can play quarterback, and now you know he can tackle, too. Squares him up and gets him down. Churchill showing you just enough pass. 
where you've got to honor that, and then that loosens you up, of course, when you want to run the football. Second down and seven. Inside handoff, Smizek pulling his way up for five more. I think Nick's mad about that fumble when he's trying to take it out on anybody who's trying to tackle him there. No doubt. I mean, you know, really good patience there. It looked like he was going to stop after he got about a yard or two. But just one little shifty move, and he barrels forward for a couple more. I mean, it's just what you see when a kid has gotten this many touches over the span of now three seasons. Third and three. Reed, nice job of dancing out of the tackle. He's still on his feet. Boy, is he shifty. Nice foot in the ground, huh? I mean, that first little burst that he did, that's hard to coach. I can see why you get this guy, shows up on your football field one day and he says, hey, coach, I can play. And, you know, when you got a kid with feet like this and burst and that lateral speed and that functional speed, I would imagine that shows up pretty quick, and it did to Coach Hill, too, when he showed up a couple of weeks ago on campus. You know, when you when you have a kid that shows up like that, you have your team pretty much put together. Everybody's been through spring. Everybody's got their positions. It's tough for a kid to break in. So no you doubt. know he had to really show in practice in order to get a spot. And they're going to go right back to him. Look at the speed. Another, oh, foot in the ground. That. He's going to score. Wow. DeAndre Reed. Turns on the Jets and the Chargers have taken the lead. Welcome to San Antonio. <laughs> wow. 43 yards on the touchdown. And we've got a Clark Peter down on the field. But watch this. We'll throw back to him and watch the plant, right? Boop, gone. Yeah, I mean, that's oh, a nice block there on the back side, too. And change of speed. Boy, he's fun to watch. A little thunder and lightning on that drive. You know, they slow kill you from about the 20-yard line to midfield, and then, bam, they get the big play. Just like that, Churchill's gone back out in front, but it looked like Fernando Amescua had to leave the ball game with an injury. Might have been just cramping up. Well, the Chargers are going to try to make it 21-14. Four minutes to play, and they are up a touchdown. Clark has had to match every time. They have done so every time. We'll see if they can do it again when we come back. Churchill up 21-14. There he is, DeAndre Reed, moved to San Antonio from Dallas, Texas, right before school started. Said, hey, Coach Hill, I'm here to play some football. Coach Hill said, yeah, you are. 21-14. <laughs> a 43-yard touchdown by DeAndre Reed caps off an 82-yard, 10-play drive that also ate up five minutes and 16 seconds off the clock. That's the way the Chargers like to do it. And now it's your move, Clark Cougars, who, by the way, got to give them credit. They've matched every single time tonight. Well, they certainly have. And I was just thinking about DeAndre Reed coming to Churchill High School and telling coach you can play football. Oh, okay, yeah, young man, well, what does the resume look like? Well, I played on varsity as a sophomore. Oh, <laughs> you did, okay. All right, apparently you did, and you must have played well, but that speed's going to show up even when the kid's a sophomore. William Young on the return. He's brought down by Kyle Pollard, who makes the tackle. Now let's go down to the sidelines and our David Chancellor. Look who we found, guys. Our good friend, Alana Sarabia. I know you for years. years. Uh, the, the, the host, the co-host of Living Daytime at 9, but you got a new gig going as well. And I'll tell you what, I'm everywhere. That's the reason we're out here today. I'm the CW Insider on the CW35. Now, Chancellor, I want to let you know about it and everybody at home know about this really awesome club that I'm ahead of. I am the front man of the club. It's called the CW Crew. Do you want to join? I do. Okay, let me tell you how you can join. So get your phone out. It's so simple, and I'm going to tell you why you should. You need to text CW Crew, and it's all right here to 45203 okay. and you're instantly in the club. 
we're gonna give you send you text messages for special discounts around town, special opportunities. I mean, to your favorite places around here in San Antonio, but only the members get these special privileges. And what was the uh, text uh, CW crew to five four five two zero three? You teased me earlier by saying something about Comic Con. Right. The Star Wars geek in me was intrigued. I didn't know you were a geek. Oh yeah. Well, then you need to listen up because CW crew members are going to have an opportunity to win a pair of tickets to the Alamo City Comic Con. That one's coming up really quick. It's going to be huge. A lot of big names there. And uh, so yeah, you can only get them though if you're a member. So sign up. All right. So guys, if you want to go see the Star Wars geeks with me. We'll, we'll hook up with Alana and we'll go. I know you guys are both on that stuff, so so we'll do this after the football game. We'll, we'll all get together and plan when we're going to go to Comic Con, right? Uh, Dave, that's all you. That's a that's, that's a yes. That's all you. That's a yes. I know I know Chuck is a Star Wars geek like me. Really? I did not know that, Chuck. Let me, let me yeah, tell you my yeah. let me tell you my Star Wars story. Dave loves Mason Star Wars. Wendy. Came out I don't know late seventies. I remember turning down a chance to see Star Wars, and I went to go see A Bridge Too Far, a war movie with my grandpa. There you go. That's my Star there Wars you story. Go. I think I was the only kid that summer that saw A Bridge Too Far, but not Star Wars. Tyler Enderlin with a, a big game puts Churchill at mid or Clark at midfield, but they lose the football. They lose the football and the Chargers recover. Big Steve Dominguez, number 74, in there to wreak havoc. And he may have come up with it as well. You know, there's been a renewed emphasis at Clark High School this year. Oh, it just came out. Yeah, it sure did. It was just a little, a little miscommunication there between quarterback and runner. But, you know, again, there was renewed effort this offseason to make sure that Clark wanted to do some things in this season. And one of them was done. They wanted to end possessions with a kick check, either you're punting check, or you're one. kicking an extra point or a field goal but we do not Jeff want any turnovers if we can avoid them obviously they've done a really good job up until this point but it's a critical point in this ball game to have that turnover we're hearing david chancellor just fine as we snap it on first down nick smizek Oh my goodness, did he just truck a big Clark Cougar. Holy smokes, let's look at that again. I'm not sure if that was Scow, big number 76. And, but watch this, this is running back on linebacker and oh my goodness. Not to go low when you've got a load like that coming at you. If you try to go high, man, you're you're going right into mm. playing right into the hands of Nick Smizek. Take a drink of water after that play. Nick Smizek picking up four more. And just like we talked about, you know, Caden still getting in there, tripping him up at the line of scrimmage, just a sophomore. Tell you what, you got to, uh, you know, we're talking about so much about Smizek. Got to really tip your cap to uh, Montoya. He's done a great job being his first year on varsity. Uh, he played last year and had a few carries, but his first, first year to be the man at quarterback. And uh, he's done a great job of just running this team the way he wants to run them. Some fakes to smize it. He hands it to him. He's thrown it. And uh, he just has, it seems to have a lot of poise for a kid who didn't have a lot of snaps a year ago. Sometimes you're just looking to get your opportunity, and that's young Michael Brooks Banks making a play. The senior. I called his name earlier. I was looking at the, lo the wrong roster, but I like Michael Brooks Banks so much, I didn't mind calling his name twice. 20. Kid, nice young man. 20 carries for Smizing now on the night. We told you he's at 103 yards. Yeah, Chuck, I know you, you've got a baseball player at Clark, so I'm sure. A lot of these kids you're familiar with. Yeah, Kate still baseball player too. Wow, another run. Good baseball player too. You know, he makes it through football season then his first day out in baseball. Breaks his arm and, you know, had to have surgery the whole shebang. But So you break your arm in baseball instead of football. <laughs> what kind of sense does that make? I don't know, but Kate still is a wonderful young athlete. You know, his dad played football at Clark and at Baylor, and so he kind of gets to be the legacy kid too. I'll tell you what, there's some proud mamas and papas watching tonight. And, uh, you know, you and I both being in this community for our most of our lives have grown up in these districts and 
Glad to see all these kids grow up and have this chance to play on TV. We're gonna take a break. Churchill up 21-14. Buck and a half left in the third quarter when we come back. Welcome back. We've got third and three for Churchill as they're trying to drive down. They lead by a touchdown. Montoya keeps it himself. He's going to be close to the first down. I believe he's going to be about a half a foot short. Maybe a yard short. Looking on the near side. Either way, it's going to bring up fourth down, and we know what that means, Chuck. Yeah, it means they're going for it. I mean, again, too long to kick a field goal, especially you're kicking one into the teeth of the wind, and there's still another minute left in this drive. So yeah, Churchill doing a good job putting points on the board in a very difficult situation. They're actually you're driving into the wind. Yeah, about 5,000, 6,000 people here. I think everybody knows where it's going. Can you stop it anyway? Smize it. Pounds. And he's got the first down. Tell you what. He paid for it. Yeah, I think he enjoys dishing it out, you know. It's like, I think he privately would rather be a linebacker. Well, that's what <laughs> Coach Hill has said. I mean, this kid would do anything for his team, and if Hill asked him to suit up and play offensive line, he'd do it, and he wouldn't even think twice about it. I mean, he's that kind of guy. And it, Hill says it's easy. You've got you know, this young man. Is, he's going to show up every day. He's a good leader. He's the hardest working guy on the team. And when you got a guy like that who's now a senior, Everybody else just kind of falls into place. Yeah, and he's got an infectious personality. He was their their, their best soundbite on that McAllister Park team when he was a 12-year-old as Reed carries it across. And remember how he, he was just bubbly and with great, just a natural in front of the cameras as a 12-year-old. And um, even after he, that California game where he had two drop pop-ups at second base, he was crying. You know, he was a 12-year-old. But after the game, he shook it right off and answered all the questions and uh, just, just had a lot of respect for him. He's a coach's son. His dad has coached basketball at St. Anthony and uh, done a great job over there. And Monarch Trophy is, uh, as always, presenting our Champions Trophy and our MVP Trophy. And we'd like to thank the folks out there, as always, who uh, come through for us every year at Monarch Trophy to make uh, both the team and the players feel like MVPs tonight. It's the end of the third quarter. Churchill leads it 21-14, and the Chargers still on the move as we come back for the fourth quarter after this. Time to look back at our third quarter highlights. And it was all DeAndre Reed. Just a great juke move to take this one 43 yards to the house. Touchdown, Chargers. And the Chargers, as we're back live, are moving it again. And, you know, Jacob Groff has had a couple of opportunities tonight. Uh, one was thrown too hard for him, and the other one he dropped. But I tell you what, Jacob Groff is going to keep fighting. He makes a great grab right there to take it all the way down to the five-yard line. Yeah. You know, he's just a sophomore, and that was a man-sized catch right there over the middle, makes the grab, and that might have been Montoya's best pass of the night. I mean, that was drilled right in there between the numbers. Great throw, great catch. It's an affiliate mortgage first down. First and goal for the Chargers. Montoya hands to Smizek. Dances no room there, and a good job by the Clark defense to bring him down at the four. Yeah, Matthew Miller had a shot at him, and I know he'd like to have that one back, but all the credit's in the world to Smizek, to, to let the you know, make something basically out of nothing on that one. I see 99 shoot his gap, get up in there nice and tight. And then Clark's able to get a lot of guys to the action. So that's the 10th play of this drive as the Chargers continue to eat up the clock. Up a touchdown. Not comfortable by any means. Smizek in the Wildcat. Going to do it himself. Good job by the Clark defense, but Smizek finds his way to Pater. How did he do that? He was stopped at the four, he was stopped at the two, and he still scores. Wow. 
particular play, you kind of know he's going to be getting the ball. And you're right, it's almost as if he greased his jersey down or something. I mean, he just fought his way into the end zone. And right there, he should have been tackled. And look, at he runs over three guys to get in. He right through him. He just wanted to be a little bit more. Hard to tackle that guy upstairs, man. It really is. He's hard to tackle, period. But you're going upstairs. I mean, that's a strong kid. He's, he's just one of those guys. Yeah. I think he can play at the next level. He's a little undersized, but obviously, I tell you what, he's he's very, very special. And in more ways than one, baseball, football, power, quickness, and, and just the vision that you really can't coach. Hey, we'd like to thank Contractors Building Supply for our 44-foot scissor lift that's uh, in the end zone tonight. Great bunch of guys. You can call them at 496-1227. They can fix you up with scissor lifts and booms and all sorts of tools. And they fixed us up tonight. They're high above the uh, south end zone, right in front of that video board at Jerry Comalander Stadium. Contractors Building Supply, 496-1227. Great guys, and I'm, just, I'm sorry, Chuck, but I can't do that. I would not be able to be up there. I would be scared. You know what I liked about halftime tonight, more than just the bands and listening to the highlights, was I got to eat some church's chicken during the break, and I also yeah. got to eat some, I thought they were brownies, but Addison Braden and Miss Rosales from Coker Elementary set up something they call bat pills. Yeah, delicious. Yeah, and Absolutely Chuck, delicious. I need you to, to, to vouch for me because my wife is watching. Did I have any no. chicken or any brownies? Nope. You were good as gold, brother, and I had your portions. I got my coleslaw, salad, and water waiting for me in the refrigerator. So enjoy that fried chicken and beans. As I'm smelling them right now, they're right in front of my face. I just it's like that they call them fat pigs. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, do I know. I've been an addict for <laughs> too many months. I'm paying for it. All right, Cougs, let's go. You got to get back in this thing. Still plenty of time. Dance the bell all night long. A little adversity. Saw some of that in the first half, and they responded. Let's see if they can dial this thing back up and make this a one-score game. A lot of fun. Yeah, it has. You know, but, you know, the Gucci Bowl is always fun. Sure. Just because of the rivalry. See that cheerleaders right there, our CPS Energy Cheer Challenge. Brand new element this year, San Antonio Sports. Excited to bring you the All-Star Cheer Challenge. You heard Mary Jackson talking about earlier. Uh, these cheerleaders are gonna have an opportunity to cheer at the highest level in the Army All-American Bowl. It's a voting deal. The cheer squads will earn points in two ways. Votes cast by their fans online and from discounted tickets that they sell to the high school All-Star game. Voting begins on September 18th and cheer squads registration begins next week. No matter what school you're at, if your cheerleaders want to try to cheer at the Army All-American Bowl, sign up. Boy, that's a touchback. Just nice bounce there for the Chargers. And so they won't have to kick it over. Clark will take over on their own 20-yard line. I wonder how that kid's golf game is around the green. We couldn't have placed that one any better. Nice. Very nice. Steve McGee talking to Trenton Ford. He'll be the quarterback. We only saw Rollins on that one or two series. And... He was very successful, but uh, Ford's been successful as well. Yeah, Clark's had some big plays in this game. You know, in the last series, they had the nice play by Enderlin, and then the turnover wiped everything out. So, you know, protect the ball and see if you can get some of these points back. Ford looking deep, fires. That's underthrown, and boy, I tell you what, somebody wanted a pick six, and that's Devin Factor. It was underthrown even for him, and. He's hoping he would have broken on that ball just about two minutes earlier or two seconds earlier. You know, great coverage downfield because really Trent Ford had all day to throw that football. Great job by the guys up front by the Cougs. It just there really was nothing open on that side of the field. Second down 10 for Clark. Full backfield. Man in motion. Jet sweep fake. Ford keeps. Oh, he's got a this blocker. is Ford run all the way. Forced out of bounds by Kyle Pollard who's been everywhere. It's time for our ASCO collision of the game. And this is where we like to celebrate the big hits, and there's a pop right there by Trenton Ford. 
nine on nine. Crime. Right there. Nice hit. Trenton Ford, our ASCO collision of the game. I was talking to Coach McGee earlier this week, and I asked him, what is Trenton Ford better at, quarterback or cornerback? And he said, I honestly can't tell you. I think he's pretty darn good at both. And I think we're seeing that tonight. Ford back to pass. Fires to the near side. It's caught. It's a nice game. Churchill coaches celebrating a big hit, big tackle there by number 42, Court Jaquez. I got a text during the middle of this game saying that uh, we were saying Jaquez wrong. I think it's Jaquez. Well, all I know is Devin Bloom made the catch, and that was a really good job by Trent Ford that time. Going through his progressions, don't see anything downfield, so hit your check down guy, take what you can, and let's see if you can pick this thing up on fourth down. Fourth down for the Cougs. Important play. Ford keeping, got a block, got the first. Ford's got more than that. Look, he's got the 50. Ford all the way down inside Charger territory where he's thrown out of bounds at the 30-yard line by the Chargers' Tyron Foley. And when you have a special player, Don, like that, you know, the guy's going to make some plays. Oh, he got a great block early in this play by his running back that released. And that kind of sprung him. And then a good vision there, nice cutback. Clark has had a 37-yard. They had a 43-yarder to kind of get to the same spot early in the first quarter. Now this 37-yarder may help them get back into the end zone. Ford going deep. Got a man. Great coverage by the safety who comes over to make the Oski. That's an interception by Turner Trucka. Boy, he... Great help over there. One was in single coverage. And he came over to help and made a great pick. We'll be back with the Chargers leading 28-14. Ah, nothing better than a pick. Touchdown saving right there by that young man. Number 20 in your program, number one in your heart. Turner Trucka. It's our banner play of the game. Dixie flag. Single coverage on the outside, and then Trucka comes over to get a little help to his buddy Devin Factor. And Chargers are going to be on the move and probably going to want to run more clock with you know who. Smizek with his 25th carry. It's going to put him close to 120 yards on the night. I couldn't tell in the last turnover if there was contact at the top of that route. But either way, it's a huge play for the Chargers now. Up two scores and trying to milk this clock in the fourth quarter. Nick Smizek just a workhorse for the Chargers. And again, we can't say enough about David Montoya, the quarterback who's running the show just like a maestro. Handles a nice Low snap there, kind of difficult to grab in, but he handled it nicely and gave it to Smizing. We talked about proud parents around town. Uh, I know a very particularly proud grandpa. David Montoya's grandpa is Ray Jones. This side of town, people who attend that mega church in 1604 Community Bible know Ray Jones as the, the music minister who runs all the music at that church. And I know Ray's a proud grandpa right there of number six. Wonder if he can sing. It's a musical family, the Joneses. I know he can play quarterback. Sure has tonight, no doubt. First down, inside handoff to Reed, who's going to pick up about three more. This is obviously a huge defensive series for Clark if they want to try to get back in this game. You can't keep giving up four or five yards a pop. I think you're going to have a chance to come back in this one. So have you been on? The field pretty much the entire second half, but got to bring it, got to bring it a little bit more. 7:40 to go. Chargers trying to grind this clock. Up two touchdowns. Second and six. Maybe seven. Montoya going on two. Hands to Smizek. He pops it. Nick Smizek may score. Nick Smizek to the 40. Smizek 
He's got the 20. He's got one man to beat who's got the angle. Smizek dives for the touchdown, and he's got it. Nick Smizek, a 62-yard score for the Chargers, and Churchill has just pretty much put this one away. Uh, we said at the top of the show, the guy can do it all. He's been everything for this program. Now he's a senior, probably adds a lot more leadership to what's going on, but he did a big play. They're trying to ice this game, and Nick Smizek does just that. I'm telling you, just a little burst of speed. We didn't know he had it in him, but he is not going to be denied. And look at that. He jumped four yards to get to the cone and does 62 yards. That puts him on the night at 188 on 26 carries as the Chargers' Caden Novikov will add the extra point. The Chargers lead it 35-14 when we come back. He's the man of the hour, Nick Smizek. 188 yards on 26 carries and four touchdowns. And standing by with our own David Chancellor is his basketball coach, Dad. Dave, how come how come Nick doesn't have a jump shot? He plays baseball and football. What's the deal? Oh, Dave. Guys, congratulations. Uh, we watched. We were down here watching him together. Mom, what's it like as he rips off a 50 or 60 yard touchdown, his fourth of the night? It's amazing to watch him run. We just pray for his safety, and I'm just so thrilled that he had a great game. Yeah, let me ask you, and you were just telling me a story as a sophomore in a stable of great running backs here at Churchill. He got a chance as a young kid to run the ball eight times, eight times in a row on a drive, and you guys thought his parents then, Oh, that's, he's going to be spent. I, I, I lost track of what Don said. I think he's run the ball 26. 20, 25, 26 times now. They're telling me 26 times tonight. Uh, what's that like to watch your son be the focal point and just be an absolute stud? Well, that's very kind of you to say that. I mean, I think a lot of credit tonight has to go to the defense. You know, they've really stepped up. Uh, they've, you know, I, I wish I knew all the guys' names because we've got a bunch of young kids on defense and a good core of returning seniors, Sly Everett. Uh, Tyron, I think, is only a junior. Kyle Pollard, a uh, bunch of uh, defensive guys coming back, a bunch of great sophomores, Court, Jacquez. Uh, and I don't know them all because they're so new, but our defense has really stepped up tonight, and I think I think they've got to get a lot of that credit as well. I want you to be honest here. I'm going to ask the touchy question here. I know for a couple of years now, it seems like the kids that played on the McAllister team want to say, we're not the McAllister kids anymore. We've all grown up. We're young men. The fact that tonight on television, a televised game, his senior year, it's the Gucci Bowl. How much will this mean to Nick to know that he's now seen in San Antonio as a football player and not the 12-year-old that went to Williamsport? Oh, he'll always be that 12-year-old. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Spoken like a dad. Just, uh, I think it's pretty cool. You know, he, he, he loves football. He loves playing it here at Churchill. Uh, loves, being, loves Coach Hill. And, and one of the things that he said, he said, this team, you know, is main... Well, he, he loves this team. He loves this team. And we've been very blessed. He's a great football player, fun to watch. Real quick, and they're telling me we got to go back. Uh, Mom, real quick, what's he got? What are you making for him for dinner? What's he having when he gets home tonight? <laughs> Anything he wants. Okay, <laughs> like a bomb. All right, back to you guys. Uh, four touchdowns. We got seven minutes to go. I don't know if he's going to play again, but Mom and Dad say maybe go for five. No. Oh, no, no. we're done. Mom and dad say done. Four is Sp good. Spoken like Four's a true good. coach. Yeah, spoken like a true coach. Coach Smizek does a great job over at St. Anthony coaching basketball. And Chuck, the reason he'll always be the McAllister 12-year-old and not the kid running for four touchdowns on, on Thursday Night Lights is because when he hit his Grand Slam in the World Series, the play-by-play -play guy was Brent Musburger, not some schmuck like me from Channel 4. <laughs> right? Uh, I mean, big so time. Short, brother, come on. I'm telling you, he had Brent Musburger going, yeah, look at live and little Nick Smazic. <laughs> there it is right there. Against Kentucky in the 2009 Little League World Series, not just a home run, it was a grand slam.
on national TV on ABC with Brent doing play-by-play. -play. So tonight is not his biggest moment. <laughs> Ford runs around. Nice job of trying to find some space and then smartly just ducks out of bounds. Yeah, his 15 minutes of fame have, have gone nationwide, not just uh, on Thursday Night Lights. Well, you know, talking to Coach Hill this week, he said, you know, obviously this is a team that is led by Nick Smizek, but he likes all these kids. He really feels like this is a hard working group of kids. They all seem to get along well together. And he's just hoping that some of this equates to some success this year. Coach Hill believes this is a top 10 team. He doesn't look at the polls, doesn't read the paper, but he knows what he has here. This is a pretty good squad, obviously, we're seeing tonight. Second down and 20, inside handoff. That's William Young. Flag down. See what the penalty is. Stops the clock and that 42nd one. Let's listen. Couldn't tell from my view whether or not it was on Clark or Churchill. Call procedure on the Cougars, and that'll back them up. Not sure if the Cougars have a play for this one. Second and long. They've converted on a couple of nice pass plays tonight. Repeat the down. All right, so there you go. Repeat the down. Chuck, I thought, did you find it interesting that Rollins never returned? I mean, he was he was good on that drive, almost perfect. I it was I was kind of surprised that they went back with Ford, but when Ford got back in, he was just as effective. Tough call, I guess, for Steve McGee. You know, Don, I think really this game, if you ask me how I thought it all unfolded, you know, I mean, Clark was right there, and then you turn the ball over, and you just can't do that when you're. You know, trying to match a team score for score. And I think, you know, that's where the game ultimately got decided. Let's see if we can catch this one. Yeah, they're going to get Kyle Pollard for tangling his feet, and Kyle's going to argue that one. He's going to say that was kind of incidental, and it was a little ticky tack, but. Yeah, they've had some calls tonight where I thought they should have thrown the flag, and that one. Oh, look, Glenn that, Hill. Yeah. He was uh, about to blow a gasket. I thought that one they should have let go, but hey, as you said, I mean, it's opening night for everybody. And, you know. A, it's uncatchable, and B, it's incidental with your feet. Uh, and Pollard closing at the end of this play. And he tripped him up, kept the kid from making a play on the ball, but I'm not sure that ball was catchable. Flag will be up. waved off, incidental contact. There you go. They got it right. Glenn Hill won the argument. We can't hear the uh, referee, but maybe he can hear us. <laughs> I somehow don't <laughs> think they would listen to us anyway. <laughs> They're going to wave that one off and do it again. So, again, I mean, if you're Clark, you're right there in this game. And Coach McGee said they had some goals this year. They wanted to win this one, obviously. They want to win their first league game. And at the end, they want to be competing for a district championship. And I mean, all those things, regardless of what happens tonight, you know, there's still a whole heck of a lot to play for. And... I think Clark's going to surprise some people this year, too. Yeah, and don't forget, both of these teams are playoff teams with 500 records. That goes to show you just how tough a non-district and district schedule that they play. You know, you go 3-3 three and three in district and you make the playoffs uh, now with these these 14 playoff formats. And so still very good quality teams. We said one was 6-5 and five and one was 5-6 and six a year ago, and both made the playoffs. So they play tough people. Um, of course, north side is split up into two zones now. They got two teams and 10 teams in that district. So they played five games non-district. You got other teams in a district, every game on their schedule is a district game. So it's kind of interesting how that's split up. Clark's gonna play a lot of these north side schools, northeast schools, excuse me. They're gonna punt it away this time. It's going to bounce at the 15. They're saying stay away from it. And Churchill will take over. 527 left in the ball game. Up 35 to 14. I believe there is little doubt as to who our MVP is going to be. We're going to have to decide that. Our defensive player of the game. Let's stick around. You're going to want to see our trophy presentation coming up at the end of the ball game. We'll be right back. 
Welcome back. Hey, you can help a local school take home the $2,500 band grant. It's all based on votes. Your vote counts. Log on to CW35.tv. Click on Thursday Night Lights, the $2,500 TNL grant made possible by Vulcan Materials Company. Churchill Chargers going to come out with some new blood. Number seven is Jordan Billups. He's a sophomore at 175 pounds. He'll take the snaps. Great job for David Montoya, who is done for the night after putting up 35. Sophomore hands to Reed, and Reed's got speed. Reed to the 35. Reed has now got nine carries. He's going to go over about the 60-yard mark. No, you're a good quarterback when you're a sophomore. You're the backup on varsity. Yeah, that's the kind of athlete Jordan Phillips is. There's not a thing that kid can't do either. Good basketball player. You should see him hit a baseball gun. I mean, he's something else. I mean, just an all-around great athlete. Seems to know what he's doing. Seems in control. Getting them all lined up right. First and 10 for Billups. In the shotgun. Fakes it, runs it himself. Nice little agility to avoid the first hit. Picks up about eight on the play. He's got, he's got that speed that we saw from Reed. The same kind of uh, good misdirection. I always just wonder when I see a young man like this, just wondering, what does he think his best sport is? Because again, I mean, he's obviously talented on the football field. You don't sneak your way onto varsity as a sophomore. And, you know, I got to believe he's probably going to be playing varsity baseball over there, too. Reminds me of another number seven that we used to see roam these fields from Roosevelt, Carlisle Holiday, who was just a great, great all around athlete, track and field, football. Yeah, and basketball, a straight A student, too, on top a. of it, man. Played at Notre Dame, started at Notre Dame. Yeah. Great kid, even, you know, better person off the field. Wasn't a whole lot Carlisle Holiday couldn't do either, man. He had a hell of a haul. Yeah, fantastic. Great kid. Can't help but think of him when you see number seven on Comalander Stadium. First down and ten. For Billups, Jordan Billups this time keeps himself Gonna be corralled really for a loss. A good tackle there. Big 87 for the Clark Cougars. It was Chad Melson. Chad coming in with a nice stop. So we got great games coming up on Thursday Night Lights. And uh, these two teams have a big season ahead of them. Look at. Coming up on Thursday Night Lights, we've got Smithson Valley and Brennan on September 4th. That's next week. Great, great game there. I'll tell you, we're stacked this year. Clemens and Stevens after that. And our first time we've ever had a private school on. Van Fushak and the Apaches. Daniel Rosenfeld and there's a fumble. Came loose. See who's got it. Talk about a sophomore. Rosenfeld kid of Antonio, I believe, ran for 1,000 last year. It's only 29 touchdowns. Can't wait to see him play as a junior against the Greyhounds. Bernie's always got a good program. Got a quarterback, too. It's going to Tennessee, brother. Be nice. Who's that? Dormant. Bernie. Dormant, yeah, at, at, uh, at Bernie. Yeah, he's a stud. He, if he didn't throw for 500 yards a game last year, it was a surprise. I mean, he, he just aired it out. It's starting to get a little reputation down here for having some quarterbacks, aren't we? Yeah, Bernie especially. They, they, they had the kid uh, two years ago put up all kinds of numbers, broke city records. Coach, you want to grab a few of his players right here and get this thing together. You don't want to turn the ball over in that situation. Obviously, you got some kids that are getting their first snaps at the varsity level, but you want to end on a high note. But... Yeah, Don, I mean, we've talked about this time and time again about just how under-recruited we always feel like the area is. Yeah. You know, and, you know, our guys show up. I mean, they play at the next level. They play at big schools. And, you know, look at how well Oklahoma and Oklahoma State have done in this area. Probably better 
everybody else. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to work a little harder. And OSU's done a great job recruiting San Antonio. You know, there, there's a kid who played at Reagan. Uh, why is his name escaping me at the moment? Wide receiver. Played with Trevor and Connor Knight at Reagan. Um, and he's at Oklahoma State. He's a fast speed wide receiver. Hayes, Austin Hayes, that's right. Mark Lieberman saving me again. Denny Smith's grandson, Austin Hayes. Didn't have many looks. OSU came and got him. Phillips picks up about three course. Uh, Megan Simmons' his brother. Uh, yeah, playing linebacker. Playing linebacker, leading that team. Ryan Simmons. Yeah. Played here against UTSA a year ago for the Cowboys, and it's fun to watch him with that homecoming. Yeah, and Oklahoma staying down here, too, you know, talking about the Sooners. I mean, they've already got the quarterback from here, and you know, there's, there's talk that they're trying to get some other quarterbacks from down here up there. And, you know, scouting early some of these younger players. And, and Dimitri Flowers, number 36, who played here a year ago for Churchill. From, oh, oh, there's a fumble right to the safety. Kicked it to him. And that may be a late hit on that. Yeah, there he is. So the Chargers turn it over with their second bunch. And uh, I'll tell you what, number eight, Will Buckman makes a great recovery and then pays for it with a late hit. That's going to be 15. And that's going to move them closer to midfield as the Cougars aren't done yet trying to score with a minute 20 left. But everything we hear is Flowers could start as a true freshman. And Coach Hill is telling us he's a baby. Humble recovery. Dead ball, personal foul, 15 yards, first down. Just turned 18 years old, so he's a grown man already up there at OU. And I wonder how Trevor feels about that, a Reagan kid having to go to a Churchill kid. <laughs> I'm sure he probably likes it. <laughs> yeah. But knowing the Knight brothers, they're, man, they're, they're good kids. Man, are, are they great kids? Trevor and Connor both uh, going on a mission trip this year. Uh, Boy, just solid, solid citizens, those two. There's another fumble. Churchill may get it right back. Yeah, we really took pretty much all night before we saw what we thought might be a first game. You know, a lot of mistakes and penalties. And turns out here at the end, it's gotten a little sloppy. Well, yeah. these, are the, these are the young Yeah, ones. sure. Yeah. These are the kids with the, the first look under the lights of Thursday Night Lights. Uh, getting back to Dimitri Flowers, I like what Coach Hill said before the game. He took him into the, into an office after his junior year, right before his senior year, and brought his daddy in, too. Remember, his daddy was the first-round pick of the Buffalo Bills as a defensive lineman, played on that 95 Roosevelt team that won state. And he showed Dimitri a bunch of clips, and all of them were him just not participating on plays. And Coach Hill said, look, this can go one of two ways. You know, what are you going to do about it? And he said from that moment on, Dimitri Flowers was a different guy. Yeah. First guy at practice, last guy to leave, hardest working guy. And changed you know, him. players born. Yeah. Yeah, we saw that on the field last year as well. Coach Hill said, you know, sometimes you just got to show the kid. He's still coaching him up. He's not yeah. happy about that last uh, possession. And um, he might win the football game, but he's coaching for later on. Look out. Look out. Game's over, but... Nice final pickup. <laughs> you don't need to do that. <laughs> Number 20, Brandon Govan, bounced out of bounds, and still, I think he's still running down the track. That's our final score. The Churchill Chargers beat Clark 35-14. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we'll name our defensive player, our MVP, and we'll hand Glenn Hill the champion's trophy. Churchill behind 188 yards on the ground from Nick Smizek and four touchdowns win the Gucci Bowl. Series has been close over the years. They won last year 35 to 20. This year almost an identical game, but I tell you what, as we've seen before, the Clark Cougars aren't done. They'll have a very good season in their district. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll hand out the hardware. Welcome to the Church's Chicken Post Game Report, presented by Baptist Emergency Hospital.
Chicken Thursday Night Lights on the sixth season. You see David Chancellor down there with a group of very happy Churchill Chargers. I must admit, I'm Charger class of 83. The Chargers winning 35 to 14, and then send it down to Chance, who's going to present Glen Hill with the Champions Trophy. And let me guess, who might be the player of the game? Dave? No, we throw a journal. I don't know. As I think most of these kids know, I, I'm a Lee volunteer, uh, tried and true. Ooh. I never thought I'd get a chance to say this, but I'll do it anyway. How about the Chargers? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Five wins of the Gucci Bowl. Where's four? Where's four? There he is. Player of the game, Nick Smizek. 188 yards. What's up, big boy? How you doing? You doing all right? First off, congratulations. Here's the trophy. Uh, five years in a row. I'm going to ask you a team question first because I know that's what you guys are all about. Five years in a row, this means you've never lost to Clark. What's that mean for you? What's that mean to all the seniors? It just shows how much work we've put in our, our time here at Churchill. Our coaching staff is amazing. Um, we just work really hard to try to get that W every week. I know the senior year for you guys, for any football player, is big. To get it started, to go in this direction after the year you had, you lose in the first round of the playoffs. How much do you want to get back, atone for that, and kind of build on something going forward? Uh, we're just taking it one week at a time. I mean, we practice hard, we, we watch film, all that fun stuff. We just take it one week at a time. Last, uh, we, we interviewed mom and dad. Uh, in the stands. It was after the fourth touchdown. We were talking about the workload you had tonight, and they said when you were a sophomore, you ran it eight times in a row on a drive. You remember that? Um, yes, <laughs> maybe. But what was this like tonight for you, just having all the carries, all the workload? Uh, what was this like for you? Well, I mean, it wouldn't be anything without my offensive line. I see y'all, baby. Nice job. I mean, they're putting in all the work. I'm doing the easy stuff. Spoken like a, like a true team guy. Congratulations. Let's bring in the coach, Coach, uh, coach Hill. Here we go. Coach, congratulations. I know, uh, I know for you coaches, uh, that first week is, is nerve wracking. I'll ask you this, what'd you see, what'd you like out there? Well, I'll tell you what I liked. We come out to start the second half and we do something we've talked about not doing. We turn it over and our defense bowed up on the 28 yard line and held them out. We went down and scored. I mean, to, to say this isn't a team game, I mean, these guys have been fun to coach. There's no egos, there's no drama. When the ball hit the ground, the defense went out there and just did their job. That, that, that was the turning point of the game. You lost a pretty good football player last year in Dimitri Flowers. You got a really good football player over there in Nick Smizek. I know you have other guys, but coaching, coaching Nick, what's that like for you and your staff? You know, Nick will tell you it's not about Nick. Uh, and, and that's what we talk about on our team. It's not about anybody. Uh, and you graduate people every year. You don't worry about that stuff. It's, it's not about that. That's what we try to do at our place, and we think that's what helps us have success. Coach, congratulations yeah. going forward. Five wins in that Gucci Bowl. I know, team or not, I know that's a big thing for you guys. We're 1-0. That's all that matters. You guys enjoy it? There they are. The 2014 Gucci Bowl champs, the Churchill Chargers. Thursday Night Lights. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Church's Chicken Postgame Report, presented by Baptist Emergency Hospital. All right, we're wrapped at the Gucci Bowl at Comalander Stadium. The Churchill Chargers beat the Clark Cougars 35-14. to Fifth win in a row in this series, this bitter rivalry between the two teams who battle over Bitters Road. Take a look at some of the highlights brought to you by JR's Plumbing. The Clark Cougars came out fired up, ready for the Chargers, but they would know that this would become a theme. Nick Smizek on a six-yard touchdown gave them the lead. Clark came back. Christopher Rollins led the Cougars on a long drive and capped it off himself. We're all tied up. More Smizek in the second quarter, pulling his way in. Good balance. Touchdown 14-7 Churchill. But Trent Ford called his own number. Nice speed to get in, and we were all tied up at 14. Close game throughout. Churchill's got a new weapon in DeAndre Reed. 43 yards with some speed, quickness, and the new kid's got to be popular at Churchill as he puts him up 21-14. But it was more Nick Smizing. As we said, our player of the game with 26 carries, 188 yards, and then a big defensive Oski, a pick by Tucker Trucka, and then Smizing just capped off his night. 
showing he's got some breakaway speed. Runs a 4.540, benches 425 pounds, and take that. Nick Smizek and the Churchill Chargers win it 35 to 14. Yeah, Don, you know, we were looking at these stats at halftime. They favor Clark a little bit, but as you see the final outcome, Churchill runs wild behind Smizek in the second half. Got some passing yards, as you mentioned, total yards in favor of Churchill as well. And then, you know, really a well-played ball game on both sides of the ball. Not a whole lot of penalties considering it's opening night. But for Clark, that was the one thing they wanted to make sure they didn't do tonight, and those turnovers were costly. Well, Steve McGee's squad will be back, and they lost here last year and still made the playoffs. And, boy, are we fired up about the year of Thursday Night Lights that we've got this season. How do you top Churchill Clark? How about Brennan and Smithson Valley? A couple of heavyweights. Then you got Clemens and Stevens the week after that. And then on September 18th, the first time we've ever had a private school on, as the Apaches of Van Fushak and Antonian take on probably the best quarterback in town on September 8th, 18th against the Greyhounds. For David Chancellor on the sideline, Chuck McIntyre up here in the booth, my statistician Mark Lieberman, who is always the best in the business. For our entire crew working on the CW35 to put Church's Chicken Thursday Night Lights on the air, we'll see you next week. Smithson Valley and Brennan on Church's Chicken Thursday Night Lights. Till next time, good night and God bless.